Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. Brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Porterway Podcast. They did not tell me. <laughs> oh my. Where's my single? Oh, you don't. <laughs> guy gets a few TV jobs and all of a sudden he's calling for single shots, wide oh, shots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. Hey, listen, this is it. Um, we told y'all something big was coming soon. And, um, you know, this is just the start of it. Yeah. Uh, but we are here at Blue Wire Studios, right here at the Wynn Casino. And uh, this is the Port Away show, show, Showtime. We got Sean. Sean's the tell. B side Sean. B-side. I, I'm always hesitant to call you B side. No, he's, embraced, just, he's embraced the role. So I feel like he has. You got yeah. to have a gimmick. Of course, Ant with two T's and our main guy, Carson A. Merck. Main guy. Yeah. Okay. And the merch is dropped. Oh. Go to yeah. the, the look, 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 look. If you're hearing this, it was two days <laughs> the ago. Theportaway.com. Merch is officially dropped. Yeah. Hall of, Fame, Hall of Fame package will drop Tuesday. Oh, when this... Oh, Hall of Fame <laughs> drop right now. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting we're doing... Oh, uh, okay. I'm yeah, like... Yeah, uh, yeah. Usually, usually, <laughs> that, usually that Sean's gimmick is yeah, he's yeah. like, yeah, the fight. I was like, it'll come out on Tuesday. Yeah, the, so. the Portaway.com. Yeah. So we also have with us right now, Andres Hell. What's going on, boss? What's happening, man? It's uh, good to be on you all show, finally. I think. <laughs> in your studio. Why? Why in your studio. You don't stress you. You like don't stress you. Like all that came at me. <laughs> <laughs> feel like he was turning like, uh. Listen, man, this was the first time I ever saw you at a fight like Radio Row, um, Right there where, where all y'all do y'all thing at, we had the opportunity to broadcast right next to y'all. So I got a chance to look over. Sean, you was doing your thing. You was comment you you was commentating right, last right, night. Right. Amateur style. You had um, both like you were working it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. the hand movement and everything. I, it's 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 amateur hour, but it's fun. I was watching. Yeah. I'm like, my man, like, he's really into this on his laptop. <laughs> Tablet. Tablet. I'm not mad at wait, you. Wait. A, a Surface 3, not even the Surface I've 4. I've just never yeah, saw yeah. y'all We're work, subtle, subtle you know? Subtle, subtle I never plug. saw y'all. I've never seen y'all work. So it was cool to see you working last night. And uh, I know that you love what I do on the mic. And it was cool to me, for me to see what you do on your side of things. And um, I think, relatively, we had a really good night on Fox. You were working. I, I had, personally, I had a really good night on Fox. D did you have a good night? <laughs> I had a great night on Fox. Shout out to... Danny Garcia designs oh, clothing. Yeah. What, what are we calling it? <laughs> DSG designer, yeah, I, think. I yeah. believe, is the official title. This dude pulled up to the Fox booth, like kicked his legs out on the table, relaxed, was on his phone. Like <laughs> I get more tight and nervous doing this right now than having to go on national. <laughs> on national. Yeah, like I, get, I don't know. It's easy for me, man. I love it. Cause you got the credibility. That's what it is. It's I, like I'm two-time world. I could I could be wrong, and, that's and, and I'm still the champ. Like I don't think I like that's not in my mind. I'm I know. Not like you know. I know. But it's in the subconscious. I'm 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 cooling now. You know what I mean. So when they say you know, hey, we'll come back to you guys in a little bit, I kick back and I relax. You know what I mean. And I just kind of stay focused on what I got to do. Uh, have my notes right there, and I'm ready to go. What do you do? What you mean? What do I? Do? What do you do? Like Andre, to me, Andres has like 75 different jobs, 75, and they're all cool though. You're like, <laughs> hey, he does that too. Yeah, and he does yeah, that I, too. Yeah, I'd be like. They're like, who is he? I'm like, he's a connect. That's, that's why, all I know. That's why I can't he's buy, the connect. That's why I can't buy him like actually working <laughs> at the fight. He's like, like Tommy from Martin. Yeah. You ain't you got think, no well, job. You think hey. he's too big for a nine to five? He's just he's above it. Hey, that's that's disrespectful. I'm not like Tommy. Come on, but man. I got work. I I, I didn't mean to co-sign that. I didn't, I didn't mean to co-sign that. I'm just saying you have so much going on. I'm like, damn, and you working, and you're working right now too. Yeah, yeah. So like last night, because uh, you know I'm the senior editor of uh, Sporting News, so we did our live blog of the fight. So I handled the live blog, and the way I have my writers, so I oversee the writers. So so I, when I'm in fight mode, I'm just in fight mode. I'm just looking at what's in the ring. Yeah. You know. So like last night we did our live blog, and then after that was the press conference. But I ain't go to the press conference. I didn't think there was much to say after what we saw last night. Is the live blog Ooh. on the, the entire time? Yeah, yeah. So we update in real time uh, yeah. for each round. Yeah. So like I do round by round live blog, and then I do it on my Twitter as well. So we all see I update on Twitter. So it's like it, the interesting thing is I started doing that like 12 years ago, like tweet live tweeting fights, and I'd have cats that I had no idea was following me in my DMs. Yeah. Like Jazzy Jeff hit me one day. He's like, "Yo, you at the fight?" <laughs> And I was like, yeah, why? He was like, because I follow your tweets. I need to know what's going on. Yeah. Like, I have all kinds of people, so it just became a thing. That's what's up. So that's what I do from ringside. I'm like live tweeting the fight. He does my, al album reviews between rounds. 
occasionally. <laughs> like I'll be listening. To, you know, I, I have my AirPods on. Yeah. I'm listening to whatever's out. So it's like I'm, I'm multitasking. My live tweeting is terrible. What'd you say? Well, you're also working though. Like you're literally in front of the camera. Yeah. Even before I was working, my live yeah. tweeting is always like. No, you're not, you are who you he's are. not real good social my, media guy. My tweet game is yeah, subpar at, at best. You're still you on MySpace, aren't you? No. <laughs> Black Planet. Black Planet. No. What, what, keep going. Keep going. What we got? That was. That was I don't know what it was. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter was also was was yeah. killing the jacket off off Jump Street. Yeah. Like the first time they flashed to the Sean on camera, they're like, "Yo, what is Sean Porter wearing?" <laughs> I was like, "Let." Give it a second to. How did you feel in the jacket? Absorb. You feel cool? Yeah. yeah. Let's I, give it a sell. Yeah, sell yeah. that jacket. Come on, sell me. Make me buy that jacket. DSGofficial.com. Okay. That's Danny Gar Danny Swift Garcia's okay. uh, clothing line, and he walks into the fights down in Miami, and when they were they were talking about him, but they were like kind of kind of cracking on him, like you know, hey, what, is he wearing pajamas on so far? I'm like, yo, my man is doing something outside of the sport. I got to support it. So on the spot, I text him like, yo, let me get one of those. He sent it to me. And I actually never opened it up until yesterday. I like that. And uh, when, when I opened it up, I was like, oh, man, do I have, do I got shoes to match? Do I got the shirt to match? All this and that. And I just basically, I was like, F it. It's, it's loud, in, in my personal opinion. It's a little loud for me, but it was comfortable. Uh, as you can see, I could kick back at the fights. Like, I can't do that in a normal right. suit. You know what I mean? So... Where there were, are some advantages, there are some, in my personal opinion, some disadvantages. I don't want everybody in the room to see me, <laughs> you know, when I'm moving. So even after the fights, I took it off. How was the temperature of it? Oh, it's, it, it's, 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 it's smooth it cool. gear. It's it's straight it, it smooth looks gear. Solid. It yeah. looks solid. It's straight smooth gear. Little, yeah. My commie, little python trench coat. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, he's doing so, some things. Man, I, I had to support him. And, yeah. um, you know, I just kind of waited for the right opportunity. And I felt like live on Fox. Pay per view was the was the was the best time. Shout Yo, out, I got a question. Shout out to Danny Garcia. I got Go a ahead. question. Did they have trouble lighting that jacket? I they never said anything. They didn't say nothing. No, they was quiet because I know they had yeah. to be sitting there like, sheesh. What's weird is they haven't said anything to me since since the uh, Errol Spence Jr. Mikey Garcia uh, pay per view fight. I, and maybe they just understood, like, hey, he's going to wear ties. That, Wait, what did you wear at that fight? I it was the Bishop Don Juan. Was that that's what it, it was? Green the green suit. suit? Yeah. With the hat, with the Yogi, the Yogi Bear. Hat. I remember. Yeah. That, that was wild. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to Vern, and Vern was like, yo, sound crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. I remember that suit. Yeah, that was the talk of the town that night. We yeah. I walked out and um even even in the back room when I was gonna go out, I said, uh, she's they came up and said, Are you gonna wear the hat? I said, Is it cool if I wear that? They said, they said well, we need Are to you get sure you wanna wear the hat. They Are were like <laughs> They were like, We need to get clearance. I'm like, all right, cool. So boom, boom, boom. I get clearance for the hat. I walk out, and I think as soon as I sat down, they could see that the tie was reflecting, hitting everything hard. So much so that they actually went to the back room and got a different tie for me to wear uh, that night. But I think after that, they just understood, like, he's going to wear some ties. We just got to light him the, the best way we can. <laughs> but last night, yo, that thing had to be buzzing. Yo, yeah. I, when I walked in, I looked up where you and Kate were at, and I was like, oh, because <laughs> like, you know the, the spotlight that it hit like, it. It was like a, it, a phone. It's got the reflection. Yeah, and the light came back and it got me. And my I, I blinked and I was like, oh shit! And I looked up and I was like, oh, that suit is crispy. Yeah, it last was shiny. Last, last thing I'm gonna say about it, then we can get to the fights. But Wade says something to me um, back during my last camp, uh, back in like October. He said, he said, there's, he said, you have a great quality, but it also gets you into trouble sometimes. I said. Oh. Talking about, Poor he says, sense. you don't give a damn what anybody thinks about you, and that is exactly what I did. I said, he right. said, but he said, there's gonna come opportunities, moments where you, you have to care. He says, so you're gonna have to figure out how to turn that off. But for the most part, if you don't like DSG's official clothing line, I don't give a damn. Yeah. For those who do, DSGofficial.com go. and go get you a suit. But for me, it was an opportunity for me to support a fellow fighter. Uh, my colleague, as I like to call him now, and uh, you know, I went for it, and a lot of people was 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 like throwing it at me, <laughs> like, "Yo, that's that's fly." My mom, my mom's like, uh "Oh, yeah, my mom's all over it." Like, I need to do, a, I need to collab with DSG now, oh, okay. cause she loves what I had on last oh, night. Big, biggest question in the world: Who is your stylist? <laughs> I tell people. It's like when you leave, when you tell your kid to get dressed, and he just come out the room with something, and you just see him like he comes out. With, but let's go. Yeah, he comes out that's with Sean like Porter. The, fl yeah. the flippers. Yeah, yeah. Just any, 
<laughs> I was like, that's Sean. And what I love about you, you don't care. That's I don't, the biggest thing. I don't care. I don't. It, it is what it is. And my son is blows my mind because he actually knows how to match and do. Not oh, not he to say got I, swag either. Not to say I, not to say oh, I don't know how to match. The jeans. No, my son will put some jeans with a with, with a blue shirt, and I'm like, yo, who taught you how to do that? So it runs in the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and we can we can close on the first time you tie a tie for for your son. It's gonna be that fat knot. So I was gonna go to like a, a son mom dance, and they're yeah. gonna be like, "Dang, that's a thick ass tie." It is what it is. But, Just yeah. what I like about it, it is, 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 you know, boxing. It's a niche sport. We struggle for attention, mm -hmm. and when when people when you're having a fight party and people are walking by the screen, you need something to grab their attention. You know, boxing needs personalities yeah. uh, probably more than almost any other sport but yeah. it needs personalities and and when people are watching the telecast they they need someone that at least gets their attention one way or the other and i think I've, the aliens can I'll see keep that real day. like not to toot my own horn but i've t i've told fox toot, put, toot. put me ringside i want to work ring yeah they're like we we need you up at the desk when when we go to y'all we need Again, like you just said, we someone, need the full shot of the we need, suit. We need them to look at something. We need them to keep the channel on Fox, yeah. and you're the guy up there. That's what that does. So I'm like, I'm like, fine, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I, so, so if y'all don't, if y'all haven't noticed, they will come to me during certain fights yeah. and, and and allow me to commentate a little bit, yeah. get all that out, <laughs> right? Because I love Lennox Lewis, but I, I wouldn't mind a little swap there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Get Sean. No, it's all good. It's Is it Brian Kelly? Kenny. 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 Ryan Kenny. Ryan Kenny? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Joe Goosen and Lennox. Man, help them out. They sweat. Lennox. <laughs> they wear the blue suits it's every the single blue man fight. Group last night. I know. I see you kill them. <laughs> they need some swag help. Do we want do we want to work our way? You know what he didn't need help that? though? Being one of the top five heavyweights oh, okay, ever. Okay, so okay. he always brings okay. it back. So just, just, just to make sure we get the record straight hey, on Mr. Lennox Lewis. Lennox. I hated on him when I was young. Because he I, beat up Mike Tyson. Yeah, I'm mad yeah. about that. I hated on him when yeah. I was young. But, like, and, and then, so to go back and watch his stuff and see how good he was, but then to have conversations with this man, this man is a lethal weapon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even today is a lethal weapon. You bring up certain names or certain, hey, would you do this or that? He gets serious. And I, I think he really want to get back in the ring. Why do you think I made sure to mention he's top five heavyweight all time? <laughs> just in case you bump into him. Yeah, the yeah. Just the, the respect is on your name, champ. Like, <laughs> he's yeah. got that saved on his phone. He's like, hey, if I criticize you, I still have this. And, and speaking right. of bump, he beat Mike Tyson. But Mike Tyson was trying to hold him at the end. He gave him a nudge and pushed him to the ground, <laughs> man. You weren't feeling no, that? I'm still hurt by it. That was one of the worst beating I've ever seen. So I feel like we, we can start across the pond, as they say. Okay. Uh, Clarissa Shields was over there doing her thing. The quote. One sided, yeah, the quote, one sided <laughs> domination, as, as she's been known to do. Cleaned her up. Yeah. Uh, had a little exchange with Savannah Marshall afterwards, which is mm -hmm. which is fun. I, f I felt for uh, Clarissa at the end with that, that exchange. Yeah. Because I'd have been the same way. Like, I don't understand nothing you're saying to me right <laughs> now. I know you're speaking English, but you're not the speaking accent. the English and, and that it, I and understand. It, and, it's, and it's heated. So, it's, yeah. you know, you, there's emotion there. But I was watching it like, what did she say? And then, and then when Clarissa was like, what? She said, I said, yeah, what she said. And Clarissa said, Where are your gold medals? Where are your gold medals at? I was like, dang. That's, Clarissa, that's, that's quite a that's quite a she's ready there. for the work. Yeah, oh, 100 percent Oh, yeah. wait. Yeah. Can we get that fight next? I'd like to see it. Big fight. It would be beautiful if we get Serrano and Taylor. Yeah. And then later this year, Marshall and Shields. I'd be down for it. I, I love Clarissa, man. I she's yeah. really developed into the full package yeah. of being a star. Um, even if even if the the you know the numbers haven't come through that matchup to her talent quite yet. I think that'll come. But mm -hmm. um, she 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 knows how to sell a fight. She gets you excited to watch a fight when she talks. Her ring entrances are some of the best in boxing. And then in the ring, she's the best fighter in the world, pound for pound. And the she is the quote. She is the greatest woman of all time yeah. in boxing history. And I love, you know, she <laughs> she came out to uh, move, bitch, get out the way. Oh, she wow. wanted Emma Cosby <laughs> to get... And then she was sweet to Emma Cosmo after the fight. It wasn't, you know, it's yeah. business. Um, but for this next fight, she might have to come out to uh, some 2001 Eve. What about, I was going to say, what about who's that MC girl? Breed. Clarissa's okay, that okay, girl. Okay, okay, Clarissa's okay. that girl. Okay, I okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. can, can, I, yeah. can I offer MC Breed? Ain't no future in your fronting. But she's Flint, Flint's own. She is, I got, I got to go with that Eve track because Clarissa's that girl. But, you know, 
She, that, that's the track. I just yeah, feel oh, like I just played both it in my head. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, oh. oh, no, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. We're talking song? about female rappers. What you got for right? MC Breeze? Not we, she's not on the show oh, yet. Yeah, I'm talking to Andres Hales. What you got? You you a spitter? Listen, no, not me. But Carson's right. MC Breeze ain't no future in your front. That's a joint. Yeah, and I'm also proud of you because you mentioned that song because that song is uh twenty nineteen ninety. 32 years old. When I was born in 1991. It's nice. Yeah. I do it's like nice. It. Oh, no, it's a better song, but for, for Clarissa, for what fits what Clarissa's got going, I feel like... Yeah, it's it, too cute. Like, who's that girl? It's too cute because you're about to whoop some ass, right? Yeah. Like, I need, you need something that's about to drag somebody. And okay. I think MC Breeze ain't no future in your front. RP, MC Breeze. It's a classic. Yes. Yeah. And rest in peace to Absolutely. Breeze. And it's Michigan as well, so... Yeah. You know. This is true. Um, but yeah, she, but, I, but mean, I feel like, you know, Amanda Taylor... Kate, uh, or excuse me, no, you combine Katie it. Taylor, Amanda, 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 Amanda Taylor, you got it. That's that's uh, the best fight that's been made in women's boxing right now, and that's a great fight, April thirtieth. But I I just feel like Clarissa Shields, regardless of the outcome of that fight or the performance, she is the best fighter in women's boxing. I agree. It, so uh, just uh, guess what? There was nothing wrong with her performance. Not at no, all. She won every round. She dominated. Yeah, right, but everybody <laughs> yeah. expects because you don't know the other girl and because. Yeah. Because you are, you have such a big name that you're mm -hmm. supposed to knock out. If I don't know this person, why isn't she knocking her out? Well, guess what? She's a professional fighter too. Guess what? Yeah. She knows how to defend. She knows how to survive. The list goes on. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm. I already knew, like, because it was a ten round fight, and the and the other chick, what's her name? Emma. I don't, I don't mean to Osmond. disrespect Osmond. her. No, uh, the, oh. the one outside the ring. Savannah. Oh, Savannah. Savannah. Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to disrespect, but Savannah's talking about you just went 10 rounds with a child. Yeah, I went 10 rounds with a child that knows how to defend herself. Yeah. Cool. That knows how to survive. You know what I mean? So yeah. I know Clarissa's going to, while she is the quote, and while she steadily has to defend women's boxing and defend herself and that she is the quote, yeah. there's going to be so many people out there talking about what she didn't get the knockout. And she doesn't have power. And, you know, kind of the list goes on from there. And I just really want to remind everybody that while we know how to knock people out, guess what? We also know how to survive. And we know how to not get knocked out. You know what I mean? So that's what she was facing. She was facing a, a tough girl that could go 10 rounds. Yeah. And, and it was a 10-round fight. Exciting. Clarissa definitely had her moments. Yeah. And, um, and 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 backed up all of her talk there, as always. There's so many fights that we've mentioned before. Like the, the one that always comes to mind is like Caleb Plant and Caleb Truex. Like mm -hmm. we're like, oh man, we would have liked to see him oh, knockout. Yeah. He won literally every round. <laughs> every, every round. round. So how, yeah. how am I going to sit here and be like, eh, I don't know, man. And you I, really should have done something different. Carissa like, is yeah. literally one big knockout away from the next level. I do believe and that. She get a like a superstar yeah. highlight knockout. It's She's out of here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that's what the casuals want to see. Yeah, They want to see it. The problem is like, Sinicia Estrada, when she got her big knockout, she beat a mom that night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like somebody who shouldn't even been Long sanctioned to fight. Off yeah. Jump. Yeah. But that made her a star, but yeah, that yeah. girl had no business being in the ring with Estrada. But the casuals don't care. They don't care. Yeah. Clarissa's fighting world-class fighters. Mm -hmm. I, I found it disrespectful of Savannah Marshall, because if you look at Savannah Marshall's record, who has she beat that's even had a winning record? Yeah. Mm. These are all women that are not good. Like, Clarissa's right. Where's your gold medals? Mm. Yeah. Where's your hardware? What you got? You beat me when I was 17. Mm. You talking? But make it a big fight. That's yeah. what Clarissa needs. I, would yeah. love it. I did ask Clarissa earlier this week. I was like, do you want an extra minute per round or do you want championship rounds? Mm. She wants championship rounds. Oh, she go mm. 12 twos. She wants mm. 12 twos instead of 10 threes. Mm -hmm. And she said, I can get a knockout a little bit later. I was like, all right. Mm. Yeah. I'm, now, I'm curious. Uh, you know, because I've, I've talked to Amanda. I literally never thought of that. Yeah. Katie, <laughs> Amanda, they all want three minute rounds. Clarissa was like, before we can get three minute rounds, give me the championship rounds. Yeah. Qu quit disrespecting us. Boxing is the only archaic sport that don't allow these women to get these three minute rounds. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it. MMA, they fight five fives, 25 mm -hmm. minutes. They have fight of the year opportunities. Why not the women? Yeah. It's crazy. I think what the women they <clears throat> excuse me. I think it's still the 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 mode right now that boxing is in where uh, it's weird. Like boxing is always trying to protect the money and 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 how do you protect the the this this the sanctity of the sport, but it, there's none of that there. You know what I mean? But I, I believe that when they're saying when they're when boxing's saying we we don't want the women to do three minute rounds because of estrogen this and 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 blood type that and the list goes on and they make it all about how a 
how a woman can't function that way, the way we would want them to function in order to win a fight. And this is what we're doing to so that they can perform the best that they can. I think they're saving money. And I think they're trying to save those time slots on TV for, for other fights that they feel like people want to see, but they need to give it to the women. They need to put those women in three-minute three, mom, three minute round fights the way that these women are asking for yeah. and allow them to be paid the way that they should be paid. When it comes to how they feel, listen to the women. Mm -hmm. If they feel they can do it, <laughs> Yo, easy enough. Stop, deal. stop limiting the women's in when life they don't actually be sports. limits. Yeah. 100%. More importantly, more importantly, like when women first started boxing, you know, like when you look at like, Christy Martin, right? There was not a lot of women that were fighting. Mm -hmm. Now you got women that eat, sleep, and train boxing. That's true. They ready to fight. That's yeah. true. Why? Like they're not housewives and just coming out of the woodwork saying I want to fight. They I, they in the gym every day. I'm right? not trying to ride no women wave or nothing like that, but I promise I know there are women out there that are more dedicated than this sport to some than oh, yeah. some men. Absolutely. Even on the championship level. Absolutely. So let them let them oh. fight. I think it hurts the sport because yeah. you, if you're an MMA fan, and I just watched. Joanna and Jacek and Zaley Wang have the fight of the year in five minute rounds where they just literally beat the hell out of each other. It was a phenomenal fight. Yeah. But it was 25 minutes. Then you go to boxing and they, they get less rounds and less minutes than the men. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? This yeah. is like, no respect, Sean, because this is like the old white visual of what women are supposed to be doing from like the civil rights era. See, he set up too. Our, yeah, our, yeah, our, I, I forgot another too. So <laughs> yeah, I say no disrespect. Yeah, we, and we, and we yeah, set up too. Yeah. To we don't do that on this show, okay? <laughs> yeah, all right, we don't do that on this show. No offense with all right? no offense yeah, with yeah, yeah. But it's the old, it's the old mentality that says women shouldn't be able to fight. I don't want to see it. Why yeah. not? Yeah. They didn't want to see women hoop. Yeah. They didn't want to see women do anything. They try to make, like, let's make the track short. Telling you, three, Come on. three years ago, four years ago, I was not for women's boxing. But after like doing what I do for TV and having to watch, yeah. I was like, yo, uh, <laughs> She gave it her all. Uh, she's got heart. Uh, she's, she's got skills. skills. She's three, you know what I mean? Three years, yeah. years ago, you wouldn't be this excited for Sorrento Taylor. No. We are excited for that fight. Yeah. Literally. And I, yeah. nothing to take for, for Shakira and uh, Valdez, but I hope that fight do numbers. I'm going to support it. Mm -hmm. We're getting behind got that. To. Got yeah, to. They're, they're trying to figure out, like, staggering the start times. Which they're going to stagger it. Which will be good. I think Markowski over at the zone, the president mm -hmm. of the zone, like, I think he's serious when he's like, well, we want to move it back because we need to see both these fights. Yeah. Valdez and Shakira is an amazing fight. I think everybody should watch that fight, but don't step on the toes of the women. Yeah. Because not only do you have that fight, you have uh, French on uh, Desiree Cruz is on the undercard mm -hmm. fight for an undisputed title as well. So mm -hmm. I think give these women the time to shine. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You don't. But I need Bob Arum to chill. Yeah, Bobby mm -hmm. always. Bob Bobby. need to chill. Talking that, about nobody wants to watch Bobby. women boxing. Yeah, Bob, that's crazy. Cut yeah. it out. You got Michaela Mayer. Yeah. How yeah. you how you going down women's boxing? <laughs> you, you got women Michaela Mayer. Yeah. Like what are you doing? And she handled and Michaela Mayer handled it as well as she could. She's just like, hey. It kind of is what Bob's it is. Bob's from the old school, like, though. He's yeah. going to tell it that's, like he feels it. That's what I'm saying. He's from know? the old school, but he's got that old mentality. You got to gotta move on. Yeah, you, got young be, you, leave them, you leave them people at home. Yeah, it's sad <laughs> to say. Because you take them out, they say the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. Mess it up for everybody. Bob's is going to be in a way better place in the next 10 or 20 years when the older people start falling off. You know what I Fall, mean? Well, falling off and uh, also just uh, well, falling off. Everybody got a dance. Dance. Okay. Yeah, opening, hey, open, open, opening their minds. Opening their minds a little bit. Either they fall off in that way, or they're just like, "Hey, maybe I I can listen to a new idea." And yeah, not you have to on site. I, I feel like we're more open. Our generations yeah. below them. But yeah, I got like. a question. How? Because you you're not doing it, but how does how does it feel to spin? Like I, everybody's over here. Like I'm like trying this. not to. Just Can't we so <laughs> we spin in the in the, old, in the old chair? No, just me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'll be spinning my oh, ass off. Be, yeah, oh. I'm not looking at two my spinners house. over here. Yeah, you know what's good about Taylor Serrano though. They got, He's like, I haven't spinned once. I've been locked in right here. Is that there's momentum after the fight because of Michaela Mayer and Alicia Baumgartner. Yeah. Because they're five pounds below, and now their fight is one of the best fights in women's boxing. Yeah. So they, you know, I guess uh, Baumgartner going to go after Choi, the Korean uh, champion, and she'll have two titles, and so will Michaela. They can get it undisputed just like Taylor and Serrano, and they can fight the winner of those fights to keep the momentum going. Boom, boom. So, that's, um, that's what I want to see. Yeah. Boom, hopefully, boom. hopefully women's boxing isn't like men's boxing and boom, actually boom. makes it down. <laughs> <laughs> the fights that people want to see more often than not, you know, but yeah. doubled it up too, just to make sure, <laughs> just leave it out there. Uh, and then Chris Eubank Jr. handle business, main event, uh, not anything. Would you say he worthy. beat Liam Williams more convincingly than uh, Demetrius Andre did? Uh, maybe. I don't know. He, he drops him early a few times and then ends up going the distance, but 
I don't know. Chris Eubank's good. I, I don't think he's there. I don't think he's going to test yeah. like, the top guys. But Yeah. I don't know what to think about him, yeah. Chris. I don't know what to think. You about know, him. I'm a fan of his pops, so <laughs> I'll always, I'll always support him at least to an extent. But. <laughs> is he a? Uh, and, and I say this with respect because it means he has a lot of talent. Is he an underachiever given his speed and? and I believe so. And got Roy in the corner. Now, but but not but fights. not. It doesn't seem like if if that is the case, it's not because of effort or dedication. Like the guy trains hard. I'm. So, I was so, just yeah. I was yeah. just thinking about it. Like some guys fight safe. We look at Adrian Brown now, and we're like, yo, this dude could do so much more than he's doing. Take it easy. I believe he fight. <laughs> I, don't know, I looked Take at you. I believe Adrian Browner fights safe, and I believe that Chris does that too. I, it's not about putting your neck out there and taking chances. It's just about like doing what you can do. If you can, if and we'll get to Keith too. Yeah. But if you can throw three to five punch combinations and land two to three of those, three to five. Why would you? Why would you do less? You're doing less. Yes, you're being an underachiever, but you're also doing less. I think you've made the the conscious decision to fight safe. A lot of fighters fight safe. I didn't fight safe. No, you sure did. I didn't fight safe. No. Wow, boy, you got clipped a couple times. You got up, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Little product, Just saying. Little product placement. I got you. Up. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Shop Sean Porter. Well, hey, what? Look at this. The Porterway. This, uh, the Porterway. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The Porterway. Got, com. Yes, you official. Uh, uh, what else we got? What else? You got, you got fight something? Fight what you said? Carl Kanai.com. Carl Kanai. Soccerworld.com. But the uh, and then on the zone there was the main event. I think is what we need to talk about. Bam Rodriguez. Hey, I believe our uh, what we said about him aged pretty well, pretty yes. quickly, didn't it? Remember last time we talked about him, we said he's a surefire. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. How about this is for a fun fact. This is going to hit you guys. I don't think you know this yet. He was born in 2000. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. He's a world champion. He was born in 2000. He's the first one, Sean. From the year of Cisco. Oh, is that, yeah. is that what you're saying? Unleash the Dragon. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? He's the first, like, millennium yeah, you're, champion? Yeah. I don't know. That, when I saw that, I was like, okay. Yeah, young kid. Hey, I'm we old. get old. Yeah. yeah. That was my thought. Oh, I'm old. Yeah. But I'll, no I'll one dead was really here. surprised, right, Dre? <laughs> no. Even though... He's young and was moving up in weight and a yeah, week's notice or a week and a half. Notice. They put him in that fight and I was like, that's a problem. Quadras was not any time to prepare for that. Like that's a, that's a problem. Yeah. They was not protecting Quadras for that fight. Mm -hmm. They put Bam in there and they knew what they were doing. Eddie knew what he was what he was seeing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I wasn't surprised by that result that's, one bit. Yeah, he is. A, we talked about it before and we joked about it on the last fight where he fought in outside in L.A. where they kept referring to him as Loma got Lomachenko. Right. And I was watching him yesterday. I was like. He got a little Lomachenko. <laughs> they brought me in. They pulled me we, in. We watching the fight at my house on the big screen. Yeah. He watching the fight on his chest. Yeah. I, I, falling yeah, in love. I, I was going to say, <laughs> falling in love. You could see the emojis coming It, it was on his belly. Yeah, it was on my belly. It was on my belly for sure. I, I, was, I, lean, he I said, was lean back like He this, said, hey, like, can I hook it up to your TV? I said, hey, man, do whatever you want to do. Because we were between what? fights. Hey, I was like, does your phone, does, can you prop it up like hey, that? chill out, man. Yeah, chill out. Don't say I'm in a bottle. I too far. Your sizes. Yeah, no, but I was I was seriously sitting there, <laughs> and then it was it was between fights, and I turned oh, no. to Ant, and I said, "Did you really put your hands?" <laughs> Yo, no, I had my hand. I was holding it. it the, my stomach helped secure. You were not secure holding. The, you were like this, <laughs> and it was standing sit, up. You was, was like this, like Sean, that. and it was standing up. Was I up. sitting like that? <laughs> <laughs> but then we're between fights, and I and I said to Ant very calm. I said, "Got throw it on the big screen." He <laughs> was like. Yeah, hey, you got it. He said falling in love, huh? Yeah, so I threw we threw it up there yeah. and watched a little bit before we ended up getting to the uh So all the pivots you needed to see. Oh yeah, all he, he, was <laughs> he was hyped. He was hyped. Hey, it's to the point where we almost missed the main event. I'm like, hey, is that a fight on? I don't know. I said, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I said he always knows. And I, I, I said, who's fighting? Who's fighting again? <laughs> oh, Keith, Keith, that little Keith Thurman fight. Yeah, we didn't turn that on. But he went after he was electric. He went after the yeah. bigger guy. For all 12 rounds, he was the one coming forward despite, come, you know, he fight at 108, but he's really a 112. Yeah. Um, but in Quadras, he walked through some shots, too. He had his, had, had his face busted up a little bit, mm -hmm. had blood coming down his face, and he, he showed it all. And he's going to get so much better from this fight. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to be the definition of you, you get twice as good once you become champion. Yeah. And he, he shows knock, every punch then, in the arsenal. Yeah, that knockdown, little step to the side, up, yeah. up, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, he, he's he's the successor to Chocolatito, man. Yeah, and, and I don't know, I don't know where he ends up or where he prefers to end up. If he's gonna stay at one fifteen, he should, but he still is a little guy for one fifteen because you could see you're watching that yesterday. And it's like he's a hundred and eight pounder, Tight. like he's a small guy. 
He should go to he stay go maybe go to one twelve, do your thing there. But all the money's at one fifteen. Yeah. So if if he can naturally, I mean, you can talk about it because you you mentioned it last week with Barrios, where maybe if he just stays at fifteen, he can settle into his weight. Or what do you think? Should he go back to one go to one twelve as the middle, then go up to fifteen? It's hard to say, especially because he's a young fighter. Yeah, twenty. You know, so while he's young, he can still, for the sake of words, stress his body. You know, we hate to we hate for a guy to have to stress himself yeah. to make a weight, but um and even if it isn't stress, I think that if he's still making that weight consistently, stay there, get some experience there, and then move and then work your way up. The other thing about it too is people love to see multi multi uh division. weight champions, yeah. multi division champions, you know yeah. what I mean? So even from that standpoint, if he can, you know, uh, carry that weight for a little while longer and get that experience. You think win some belts? You think one twelve makes more sense than one oh eight? Maybe just go down one. Well, guess back, what? All the, the way back to one oh eight. The 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 further up he goes, the more eyes are going to be watching. Him, True. You know. Absolutely. So yeah, that's 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 what I would that's what I would encourage. Especially him to do, those guys. Yeah. Eventually move up where where you can be seen. We can more fight money. Estra uh, Estrada and Chocolatito and so I mean. I'd even love it if somehow he could be, grow into 118 and fight Ino Ue one day. You know, that would be amazing. But what, what would you I, do? My face would melt. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to I wouldn't even know what to think in that moment. But and he's a great humble kid too. Yeah. Uh Bam Rodriguez. So I they posted yeah. uh, I believe Robert Garcia who trains him posted a video 10 years ago where he yeah, got in the ring at Nonito's With Donaire. media day. Mm -hmm. And Donaire was like, "Yeah, he's going to be good." And he's literally he's a kid. <laughs> He's, Ten. A, he's 12 at that point. Yeah. And gets in there. He's this little kid. He's throwing yeah. whatever. And Nonito kind of co-signed him. And then 10 years later. No, but Nonito kind of gave a serious, yeah, he's going to be good. He yeah. didn't just go like, good job, little man. Yeah. Like he looked at the trainer after he threw a couple of He's like, okay. Yeah. I've seen him. I, I don't want to keep showing him nothing. He's yeah. good. Yeah. So you see it like that sometimes. Special kid. Somebody ever told that to you? Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I never, I never, and especially when I was young, like I didn't, Want to be a world yeah. champion? I didn't want. I, so when people would say that, I was just like, I'm gonna do this until I go to the NFL. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah. as a kid. But you do see that the one that comes to mind for me is Montana Love. Okay. Mm -hmm. As a kid, like he was a badass. He was running around in all of the fights, getting in trouble, all that kind of stuff. But when you got him to settle down at the gym and and work, we, nobody could wait for him to turn eight years old so that he could start Natural fighting. Was it kind of like Natural Bruce Carrington talent. a little bit? You mentioned he was kind of running around those fights in Brooklyn. Like Bruce was much older, older though, when time. I saw yeah, when, yeah. when I saw Bruce. But yeah, I mean, like I knew I knew Bruce's honestly Bruce's commitment level is yeah. what is what made me feel yeah, like want to get behind him, Mister Carrington. Yeah, Mister Carrington. True shoe. Yeah, that's what made me want to get behind him. Like you could just see like some there are there the degree of separation between good and great is very very minimum. And there are those, there's things for me, what I believe is there's things you can see that will make you believe somebody's going to be great. And then there's things that you can't see that, that you know that will, that someone can be great. So Bruce, just for an example, never saw him box, but the way he was moving around in New York, every time we were there was like, this dude loves this. Yeah. And then I asked him his goals, his aspirations, he had it all like in his da 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 da. I'm like, man, you'll get there, man. Just keep going. You know how dedicated he was? He saw in the future, said, one day I want to be on the Porterway podcast. <laughs> podcast didn't even exist yet, 10 years before it happened. <laughs> Whatever. But we got him on. There. Whatever. Um, yeah, the zone card, though. Uh, Bam held it down, first world title. I know you said that already. I know, but I was going to transition, as I've been known to do for you. Do your thing. Do your thing. Give him, hit him with something. To the Fox pay-per-view. <laughs> Showtime Sean Porter was in the building. Andreas Hale was in the building. Sean Zaitel. I was at Ants. Um, <laughs> we was we was at my house. We were eating well, yeah, we eating as well. always. Yeah, that's what we do. Um, Who's whose party was better? Mine. I wasn't even yeah. at yours, but I already yeah. know Ants was. Yeah, 100, every time. Hundred. I'm from the south. I'm I, I'm bred for, bred to do this. Yeah. You come to my house, I'm gonna treat you like your family. And even feed, if you even if, feed you like your family. Yeah, yeah. yeah I treat right. I treat you like family, didn't I? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Come sure. on now. Mm -hmm. Um, she not even here. <laughs> he, he, he was talking to somebody. Who doesn't even. To? He was talking to a talking ghost. To a and ghost. The, and the ghost co That's we'll, how official. We'll, it we'll was. bring her in in a second. Yeah. We'll bring but, her in in a second. We know our audience don't really appreciate yeah. who we bring on this show all the time. Yeah. But we are gonna give her some love when the um, time comes. Yeah. So, and we appreciate her. And I feel like we go. We can start uh, probably pay per view. Abel Ramos got upset. Was noteworthy on the Fox card. Mm -hmm. uh, Santa Maria stepped. Bad in. loss for him. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. That's five for him, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yes. and he look and he still like he he was around away from winning fight. that fight. Yeah. yeah. Fun you fight. know, around away from winning the fight. Um. He's a good gatekeeper. I don't know. It's weird. Like oh. it's it, but it's weird. It's weird because it, but, uh, 
You can be well now. You could be what eight and six and make the playoffs for football. What is it? Eight and mm-hmm. nine and eight. Too many games. seventeen games. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, huh? nine and eight. The Eagles made it a nine and eight. Nine and eight. You yeah. could be nine. And, you got eight losses and make the playoffs. And who who made the playoffs? The Eagles. The Eagles. Oh, okay. They didn't go far. Right. Give me a team that went far. That that the, had the Niners. The Niners. Nine Nine They're trash. The Niners. The 97, oh, yeah. we got, the Niners. We got two 49ers fans on here. Yes. I forgot about that. Yes. Yes. I mean, we're both wearing blue, but... Yeah, enjoy yeah. watching the Super Bowl it's, with us. Your but you got three losses, Relax. four yeah. losses in, in boxing, and everybody's like, no, nah, he's not the guy. You're you know? the guy. Mm-hmm. You're the guy. But I think he's still... I, I'm not saying that. You know, I don't know if okay. I... But I, I still think him. he is a good opponent for young fighters coming up. You know, we look at gatekeeper like it's such... But the sport needs gatekeepers. Let me ask you this. You no? Know? Is there anything that he can do to not be a gatekeeper at this point? Um... No. Time machine? Okay. No. You got to no. go back in time. This is where he's at now. But that fight, though, we got to talk about Lisa Champa's scorecard. She had a 98-92, him losing. I watched that fight. It wasn't 98 yeah, it wasn't I, was sitting next, I was sitting next to yeah, Keith Adig, and we yeah. looked at each other. It was like, who, what is she scoring? Lisa Champa might be the worst judge uh, in uh, Vegas. Carson got somebody worse than that. Who? Adelaide Bird? Is that who we talking CJ about? CJ Ross? Yeah, 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 yeah. She's the good. But Lisa is yeah, that's, bad. That's a Lisa, like 98-92? Abel Ramos won at least three of the first four rounds. And then he took his foot off the gas and allowed him to get back in the fight. That's still three rounds right, yep. and a few swing rounds. 98, 92. What is she, Chuck Giampa's daughter? Or, you know. That's his lady. Uh, oh, oh, wow. Yeah, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's worse. Yeah, I mean, if, I mean, if you've seen Lisa and Chuck, you'd be like, word? But, yeah, you know. Like Robert and, and Adelaide, right, right. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> kind of, sort of like that. You can't. But... <laughs> It's yeah, I, I, but they married, right? They pulled together. Pull yeah, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I mean, yo, it was, it was a that scorecard was out of hand. But, <laughs> yeah. but Ramos is a, I think he's he'll be a good opponent. I don't know what he can do to get out of that. Boxing's got a bad <sighs> stigma. If you lose a couple fights, it's over. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like <clears throat> a rematch with Luke Santa Maria. Uh, but then beyond that, like how many wins until you well, are you like beat, you know you beat one of those young guys? Yeah, is how you get back yeah. into it. You know, you knock one of them off. Okay. And, and, and that, you sat up with, I mean, with, yeah, with yeah, intention. Yeah. I mean, look at Gabe, came with it. Yeah, look, you know, Gabe, look at Gabe Rosado. Gabe Rosado right. put, puts the guy right. face down ass up in the corner and then gets a big fight with uh, Munguia. I don't know. He wins that fight. He's he's fighting for a world title next. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's tough. Uh, I don't think it, getting becoming a gatekeeper is easy. Let, becoming not a gatekeeper <laughs> is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> like it's easy to label that, but it's hard to get that label off you. This is why I brought that up. I brought that up because for several rounds, and even at the end, you could see that Abel had so much left. And if he does some things right, he gets a win, and not a lot, and not a fifth loss. And we're not talking about him being a gatekeeper. We're talking about what's the next fight for him. He did. He had a couple minor errors, one or two bad rounds. Of course, a bad judge. And he now he's got a fifth loss. And it's like, man, I was looking at a dude who who I so they showed my top ten in the welterweight division. I actually had yeah, you messed uh, up. Trash. They had me they had me all the way trash. messed up. You're they had me trash. all the way messed up. I think they made it up. You think you think they, they somebody was behind the scenes? It was tampered pulling, with. Pulling some strings. It was the word I used. It was tampered with. But I had his nephew uh ranked uh like nine or ten. Yeah. And as I was watching the fight, I'm like, man, maybe I put the wrong Ram- Ramos in the in, in, in my top ten. <laughs> And then, of course, he comes up short, and I'm like, can I still think that? And even Joe, uh, Joe Goosen had him in this top 10. Can I still think that? Can Joe still have him in this top 10, even though he lost that fight because of a bad judge and because, you know, one or two minor mistakes, you know? So, I don't know, man. That, that Seeing him lose kind of, kind of, I was feeling for him because I was like, man, like, you, you were on a winning streak and on your way to back to that Ugas fight, back to, you know, a big fight, and then... You know, yeah, he's got some some tools. Yeah, he's got yeah. heavy hands. Yeah, and absolutely. And that's my point. Play. Like, yeah, yeah, does a bad night regulate you to go back? You know what I mean? Like you but said, it, using but it. It's ha- not the first bad night. Yeah, that, I think that's the issue. If this was like a one time thing, we're like, yeah, he had an off night. It happens. No worries. But like, that's not his first loss. So it's tough. What was the opening? I'm getting the opening fight on the pay per view. Uh, Luis Neri and Carlos. Oh Castro. yeah, yeah. So, Luis Neri. Yeah. Put his ass down early. That was a good fight. Oof. That was a good fight too. Left hand right <laughs> left hand right down the middle. Boom. Put him down. What'd you think? Um yeah, I feel like you had some heat coming. I, you know, I'm not gonna say what I was All gonna right, say. Yeah, I'm gonna be respectful. Okay. Or say it. He fought safe. 
go I'm going to go back to what I said about Chris Eubank. Mm -hmm. I felt like uh I felt like Luis Neri fought safe last night. I felt like he fought with a lot of boxing ability and I felt like he fought to to make it through those 10 rounds. Uh he didn't want to uh, blow his load at any point and have anything less going into the last round. I think he he fought where he felt safe and comfortable. And of course he controlled the ring and the temple and everything like that. Castro had nothing for him. Yeah. When nobody when somebody's got nothing for you, Take all of it. You know what I mean? I yeah. felt like he could have took it and didn't. So I felt like he fought safe. Crispiest beard in boxing, maybe. Crispiest, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like that thing. Because AB's that's, gone. That's, that's pound for pound. <laughs> that's pound and for pound Do you feel like the way he fought had anything to do with the weight Absolutely. issue? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Uh -uh. Oh, you had something. Had everything to do with his last fight. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. Figueroa fight. He came back fighting safe because of that Just Brandon trying Figueroa to get a victory. Fight. Just trying to get a victory. And he is that what you saw? I don't know. I don't want to put words. I mean, I felt like between that and the weight, the weight cut. Yeah, because he didn't want to talk to anybody yep. all for the last two weeks. He was hurt. Yeah, I feel oh, like yeah. he didn't want to blow his load and was like, "Yo, I got to make sure I get to the end yeah. of this fight." Yeah. Because and if you watch the fight, I mean, it was a good fight, but he let him back in the fight. Yeah. You drop somebody a minute in the fight, people, especially casuals that watch, is like, "Yo, that's food right there." Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. finish your plate. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you left that plate. Yeah. Yum, yum. I don't know. It don't yeah. look good. It don't look good. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a it's a solid win. You yeah. got a W, but is anybody clamoring to see Luis Neri after that performance? No. We were once upon a time. Once upon a time. Well, yeah. I, I was. <laughs> yeah, 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 I like Neri. Yeah, yeah, just, good. It was a good. It was like it was a solid win. Solid, it wasn't spectacular. Castro Castro coming off Santa Cruz. Yeah, Cast, coming off of knocking out. Uh, I think he knocked out Escondón. Castro did. Yeah, last yeah. Oscar, Oscar I thought Castro was gonna get it together and do it again. So credit to Neri for that. You know, knocks him down early and then and then coast at some times. He was mm -hmm. dancing around a little bit. He even looked at his corner after he threw a combo and kind of told him like, "See, like I'm doing doing some stuff." But <laughs> that's crazy. Um, yeah, so he wins. I would do that to my dad. Like my dad's <laughs> yelling while I'm training. Like I'm like, oh, so man. then you know, every now and then I had to piece somebody you up and say, that? <laughs> "Yeah, you're next." <laughs> uh -huh. But uh, next fight, Jesus Ramos. And uh, Vladimir Hernandez. Jesus got pushed. I know he would. What did you... So my criticism of watching him yesterday was I think he could have made it a lot easier on himself. I think his, he could throw the jab out there a little bit more, maybe move a little bit more, but he wanted to sit there for some reason and exchange. I mean, it was interesting. I mean, he, he allowed Vladimir to hang around a lot longer than I thought. Yeah. Because Vladimir was super aggressive. And I felt he could counter him, set him up for, you know, set some traps, and he kind of yeah. didn't. But at the same time, I think Ramos kind of knew he was going to get the finish at some point. That's what, I mean, that's what I saw. I felt like he was going to get it. He found his opportunity and got the job done. Yeah. So as long as you get the job done. Very true. You got a stoppage over a decent opponent that was going to be super aggressive from the belt, from bell to bell. So yeah. he did what he had to do. I thought maybe that was a chance to show a little bit more. Show a little more in your arsenal that, hey, I, I can move a little bit. I can box a little bit. And he was like, nah. I think here in exchange. I think while we that's what we expected, I think that the game plan was for him to kind of cover, be defensive, allow um what's the other gentleman's name? Uh Vladimir. Hernandez to kind of, you know, go some rounds, wear down a little bit yeah. and take him out near the end. I knew he was gonna knock him out. And Kate looked at me after the cover round, she says, Why are you so so confident that he's gonna get the knockout? I said, This guy takes too many punches and he's taking punches from a young guy who is Got a lot of power. Heavy handed. For it's sure. very handy handed, heavy handed. And so I was like, eventually it'll come. And I was glad it did because I looked really, I was talking to her really sure. Yeah. And like you said, I'm I'm the expert. So everybody believes me. I was like, don't let me down. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure being the expert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like his heavy hands and how he relaxed he is in there. Only question, uh, and I love his age. He's 20 years Super old. Super relaxed. I was it's digging very him. Relaxed. I, I, I dig him. I dig him. He's in my top 10. And guys, when they're relaxed, Sorry, seem to have. He was at 54, wasn't he? Uh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, 47. Yeah. he just moved out. He just yeah, yeah. Moved out. yeah, he's he at 54. Yes, but I know you're usually, when you're relaxed, <laughs> it looks like you get better timing. Yeah. Um, and he's 20 years old, which bodes really well for him. A question I have for you, though, Sean, is he, uh, he, he had a good up jab, you know, down at the waist, but he was getting tagged a lot, trying to keep the hand low and go at the waist. Is that something you can really pull off at the top level or if you're not blessed with? the gifts that are optimum for that style. If you're not blessed with great reflexes and That's hand what it's speed, all about. Right. So That's should he maybe about. make an adjustment there and not maybe move away from the shoulder roll? Absolutely. Okay. That's what it's about. You can, you, uh, I think for a lot of fighters, uh, the shoulder roll is just to look good. Like no, no, no young fighters are out there to, to, to master show, the shoulder roll. Mayweather effect. 
and then Mayweather you, and you said it, use it to look good. But what's the ironic thing is you look horrible if you, you do the shoulder. <laughs> not the Ramos did. I thought I think, Ramos yeah, did okay. Yeah, yeah. But like typically when you do the shoulder roll to look cool, how you does, look ridiculous. How does no one that doesn't click to any yeah. of these fighters that try to shoulder roll without av actually having someone show them how to it's do like it? It's like now you're actually making it. You just are making it easy for somebody <laughs> to punch you. You're like, that's I'm going to kind of shoulder roll and yeah. then just boom right over yeah. the Yeah, That's funny. But isn't the... You know, the science, the, the reason why you're tempted to drop one of your hands is it's it's so much harder to have that flexibility when weird, these are man. up here, right? Yeah, I don't you know. Got, it's weird. Because it just seems like once you drop them, it's easier to... When I trained when my entire life, like, the training was like this. And it was like, slowly, it was like this. And it just, you get, to, I, I found a place where I was comfortable. And I did it so much. And my dad would try to force me to get my... And I just try to get him to understand, like, this is where I want to be. But I found where I was comfortable and where I could be effective. And I think that that is another thing that these young fighters need to learn how to do. Find the style that fits, of course, your technique, or excuse me, not your technique, your talent and your skill or what you're possessed, you're uh, gifted to do. There's some guys who are gifted to be fast and have quick reflexes. Those are the guys that should be shoulder rolled. Right. If you don't, If you don't have quick reflexes, if you aren't fast, if you aren't – mentally uh, or unconsciously a defensive person i wasn't unconsciously defensive i had to i had to learn how to be defensive i had to learn jab slip and things like that because if my dad didn't show me that i was coming for your head you know what i mean so i think these fighters need to learn how to train to, according to what they can do opposed to what they see on tv and you can like something but it might not suit you <laughs> so <Yo>. like <laughs> you can like floyd and you can think that shoulder roll man that looks so cool but if it's not you, it's not you. Train to your strengths. It, yeah. I'll never forget Andre Berto fighting. Uh, oh, what is it? I'll let you do it. I'll let it's you do it. It's the Robert Guerrero fight, right? Yeah, yeah. Andre Berto comes out in the rematch. Oh, Robert Guerrero has the shoulder roll. And I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Everybody, everybody thought, everybody thought, everybody thought, everybody thought that. I forgot about that. Everybody thought that. <laughs> everybody in boxing thought. said they. Everybody, all at one time, we were sync. I don't care where you everybody, were in the world. Everybody yeah. said, what is he doing? Yeah, cut wow. it out. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, like we all grow up watching basketball, and it's like Hakeem Olajuwon did the dream shake in the yeah. post. But you got to have phenomenal footwork Absolutely. to pull off the dream shake. But I had friends in school to try to do the same thing. And I'm like, yo, we're falling out of bounds. He said falling out of bounds. You know, like, can what we do you, have if a demonstration? Footwork? I don't know yeah. the dream shake. Can we do it shake? right now? Can we have like, a demonstration? I'm not doing the dream shake. Did you see right what he was like? He just like, God damn it. He was like, about it. Y'all ain't about to play me out here. He's keeping within his means. But it's the same thing with Jordan with a fadeaway in the post on the block, right? Like, there's so many, like, shooting guards that try to do the Jordan fadeaway and just don't have it. They're just not good. I don't know it. Just do it. Hey, just do it. I'm not doing it. You know both. Listen, first of all, I'm plastic the seat, so I ain't getting up. Yeah, okay. Like, when Floyd. <laughs> works with Tank in the gym. On some, I'm like, that makes sense because Tank has the talent to pull off mm -hmm. some of the shit Floyd's trying to show him. Yeah, right. I don't think Floyd's gonna try and take your average fighter and oh. and right because it's all reflex. Same with Haney when he works I think with I Haney. Saw Ishay Smith do it. Floyd, Floyd wouldn't the, work with that. Was the cutoff for me? If 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 a guy right. that couldn't do it walked up to Floyd and said, "Hey, can right. you show me the shoulder roll?" He said, Floyd. "No, you can just roll." Floyd, you just, yeah, you yeah, 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 exactly. Floyd wouldn't. Floyd knows what he's looking at, and he knows if you shouldn't be doing that, I'm not gonna be the one. Yeah, and that's what a lot of these coaches and these these parents and whoever's behind these young guys, like, hey, get off of the YouTube, get off of, and or if you admire it that much, learn how to do it. And I think with Andre Berto, it was just like we he, we held him so high up there for you to come in the ring switching <laughs> up your whole style. His traps, bro, his traps are like, come on, man. Do what you do. Did he do it with you? In unison. No. no. Oh, he said that it was a one yeah, fight deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, have time. he was like, yeah, he had no chance. Yeah, time. But I think Berto came out because he didn't know what to do. And he was like, I'm going to try this. And I know Robert was like, oh, that's food. <laughs> I'm about to eat this. Like, what are you doing? You don't have the reflexes. You don't have the skill. I remember Adrian Broner tried to do it. Yeah. 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 And Adrian Broner fights in modes. Like, he's either offensive or defensive. Right. And he never, he doesn't know how to seamlessly shift between it. So when he's in shoulder roll mode, he just stayed there. It was and like, you could just Yo. punch away. Yeah, just keep just throwing. Like, right. He ain't, he ain't going to throw in between your punches. He's just right. going to stay there with it. I just It just frustrates me when I watch fighters, like, watch Roy Jones on YouTube. It's like, put your hands up, man. Yeah. yeah. You about to get smoked. Like, Roy did broke every rule in the book when he fought. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. So, yeah, the Birdo fight, that was immediately what came to mind. You know, he got a shout out at the post fight, too, Ooh. Andre Birdo. Did he? Because Dan Bur Keith was like, Dan Birmingham used to have me get beat up at 14 years old by Andre Berto. So he, <laughs> you know, uh, I, told, I told Dan that's child abuse, man. Damn. With Canelo, he he got comfortable with Canelo, dropped his arm, hands. This is Canelo Alvarez. What the hell are you thinking? <laughs> hey, it, it, Caleb was just. At, at his, I love Caleb. Yeah, but yeah. It, 
him talking to Canelo was like the funniest thing in that fight. You're pretty good. And Canelo's like, yeah, but Canelo's like, I'm going to kill you. It's yeah. not over yet. It ain't it's over yet. You talking to me. It's a championship fight. But Canelo's just, that's just another level of yeah. fighter. Yeah. But that, that's a fighter that watched, that fought Floyd, fought other people, and then would like take pieces mm -hmm. of everybody that he fought mm -hmm. and applied it to his game. And now look at him. Yeah. Other fighters, they was just, I'm just going to be like Floyd. It just don't work out. Mm -hmm. He tried, he had, he went through his phases of trying a bunch yeah. of Floyd, the Alfonso Gomez fight yep. on the <laughs> shoulder roll getting nailed by a Gomez. He really found his style in that second Golovkin fight. Yes, he did. Question yes, he is, did. who beat he, Alfonso Gomez more convincingly, Sean Porter or Canelo? <laughs> <laughs> um, ooh, ooh. Did you stop him, Sean? I can't recall. I did you so. get stopped? I thought I went the distance. No, nah, I didn't get stopped. <laughs> I went the distance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but how many, did he, how many rounds did he win? I busted him up. None. How many, how many, many times did he hurt you? Because he won some rounds against Never. Canelo. He actually won some oh, rounds against Canelo. I don't Canelo. think he won any oh. rounds against me. Well, well, oh, so you could be Canelo? But again, I didn't Is think Ugas won any rounds yeah, against yeah. me. You, you're trying to come back for Canelo? What did you just say? I said, but then again, I didn't think Canelo won. Or Ugas. I didn't think Ugas, Ugas. won any yeah, we'll fights. Win, wins. Oh, oh, the co oh, yeah. oh, 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 uh, Leo Santa Cruz <laughs> is back in the building. Got some blonde hair now, holding it down. Yeah, that threw me off. Yeah. The What's up with the hair dudes, man? The hand, the hand twist was still there. Might be an Ino Uwe fan, you know? Yeah, could be. Ino Uwe is hot in the streets. He wants the, the blonde it, look. It was a very uh, Leo Santa Cruz performance. Performance. Yeah. Ta -ta -ta. But he looks Early 100%. Cut. Yeah. He looks yeah. like every bit the fighter he was before. Actually, in a few ways, he looked like a, a little better because he kept hurting uh, Carbajal Carbajal. with that overhand right in the last 10 seconds. And that, that looked like a new look from Leo where he was really sitting on it and and his left hook to the body was sharp all night. I thought he looked 100%. I don't think, like Keith Thurman in the main event, he looked good considering the layoff and et cetera, um, but still not 100%. Leo Santa Cruz looked 100%. Yeah, so. yeah, he, he looked good. It's been a little bit of a layoff for him. We yeah, Leo we, was like, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I'm going to go out there and give him my best, you know, his, his usual spiel. Um, but he looked great. The thing that I like most about Leo was after a couple of rounds, Leo started to smile after the rounds, and that's I'm that I'm used to that from Leo. I'm used to him being really hyped and really in the moment. And there were several rounds where he would finish the round, and he's like, "I'm here, I'm feeling good," you know. So when you got a guy who is now, I think he's 34, 33, 34. You got a guy that you know just coming off of a knockout and things of that nature. You're wondering how long, how much longer he's gonna fight. He's he's made money, and he he is a Hall of Famer. How much longer does he need to go? So on and so forth. When well, you can see a guy doing what he's always done the exact same way, safe to say he's going to be here a little while longer. Over, overcame mm -hmm. some cuts. Yeah. All action fight, as always, with Leo. And I'm ready to see him and Mark in a, fu in a yep. fight next. Yep. My yep. guy, what, what's our last? What's Mike Sayo. Mike yeah. Mike Sayo. I'm yeah. ready to see that next. That's the one I'm pulling. And I, hey, I think Mark I got pulls Mark. it off. Yeah, I got Mark. I think Mark gets it done. He's, he's younger, yeah. bigger at the weight. Punches hard. Sean hey, refused to comment yeah. before. Can, can so I, 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 yeah. What is the good? What do you think? Hey, how, how do you like that fight? Stopped? We'll go to Andreas. The, new, the new panel don't, here. don't disrespect. Don't oh, disrespect. Who gets stopped? Max Sayo uh, versus Santa Cruz. Santa think, Cruz gets stopped. No. Mm. He, the, no, Leo's durable. Mm -hmm. Leo could take a punch. Okay. I, th I think Leo hangs around. What I, the only thing Carball had for Leo was headbutts. Nothing. Like he, he no, offered he gave nothing. He had nothing. He had nothing. Like he was there to get. Same spot headbutts. Yeah. But Carball, he wasn't much of an offensive threat. Yeah. He was there to get hit. Yeah. And, I mean, Leo's not known as a big finisher, but yeah. to see the output is what I like. Mm -hmm. When Leo's throwing hands, I mean, Sean, you probably test this. There's a lot of fighters who get knocked out, and they get shell shot. They Absolutely. come out, they, they're scared to throw hands because what might be coming in between those punches. Mm -hmm. Leo was letting his hands go. And I have a question for you, Sean. Did you say, did you take a shot at me? Like, you not at all. It. No, okay. not at all. Right. But I want to know what you He's see. He's like, so after you got knocked down, how did you nah. feel? <laughs> but, but, but you never changed, like... You've never been gun shot. Yeah. But you've seen a lot of people get knocked down. They get gun shot. Yeah. I, I hate keep bringing up Adrian Broner. But, yeah, yeah. But Perfect after the example. Madonna fight, Perfect he wasn't the same guy. Yeah. He went from five, six punch combinations to pot shot. Yeah. yeah. Everybody said, oh, man, what you did to... I said, no, Madonna was the one that started that. I, yeah. You know, I just kind of... He couldn't find no way to hit two. you in that fight. Yeah. Oh, 10th round. 12th round. 12th round. Yeah. 12th round. Yeah. 12th round. Still, it was a pot <laughs> shot. Yeah. <laughs> but I do right, it's a heavy ass shot. Yeah, it's a yeah. heavy ass pot. It, Almost fair. Were you there? <laughs> yeah, I was there. Did I give you a ticket? No. Okay. <laughs> Good. I just, I didn't know. I feel like I need I'm a I'm counting my regrets, and I didn't <laughs> want to add that one to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what was your question? 
I was going to say, who's nicer, you or Leah Santa Cruz? Is, I've never met two people no, who are the nicest people in boxing. Santa Cruz. Nice. Santa Cruz. Don, Donaire's up there, nah. too. Yes, put, Bonito's up there, yeah, too. Yeah, Leo, he, he solidified it uh, a couple days ago. I promise you, this is a true story. I, I, I asked you to tweet that. Yeah. We were doing the fighter interview with him, and when we were done, he said, all right, love you guys. Talk to you later. Oh. Bye-bye. <laughs> I, said, I said, did he just, I, I was like, did he just say I love you? Yeah. He's no, he's the nicest guy in boxing. Was that at the fighter meeting? Yeah, it was the fighter meeting. Yo, and yeah. I've been in my fair share of fighter meetings, and most of y'all are pissed off at fighter meetings because it's right. My dude said, "All right, love you guys. That's, that's see you later." Incredible. Yeah, that's incredible. No man, he's the guy. He's such a nice guy. You know, you know what I noticed? He's the only fighter I noticed after the after every round. He's like, "Come on, tag yeah. in." <laughs> we'll go back to the corner with a smile on his face. That's him. I'm yeah. like, bro, just Got go. Him. That's Gotta my guy, him. man. Gotta love him. That's my guy. Dude, I've never like seen him turn down a picture, an interview. Yeah, he's he's a great guy. You never you never really see, you never see him not smiling. Right oh. in the ring, outside the ring, he's just always happy. I I I feel like I have a knack for not being biased. I feel like I can always kind of keep push everything to the side and tell it, say what I say, tell what I feel, whatever the case may be. I believe that so much so that when I when I know that I'm gonna be biased, I'm fly. I'll tell you like. Y'all tell I'm me y'all biased right now. Y'all ask me who 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 wins, <laughs> Leo or or X Y Z. It's always gonna be Leo, Demetrius Andre. Always, or be it's always Andre. gonna be Boo Boo. <laughs> yeah, is what it is. Yeah. I can respect that. It's honesty. I yeah. tra- honesty and transparency. I can yeah. respect that. Yeah. But do we move on to another guy you you're friend friendly with? Uh oh, Mister One Time, my okay. dude Thurman, my dude. back in the ring. Oh, man, I'll I'll be the one to say it up front. Couldn't stop looking at his hair. Whole fight. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I I I made a conscious decision stop looking at his hair. Yeah, he couldn't do it. I literally <laughs> he threw these punches and I was like, "Yo, who the hell is that?" Somebody on Twitter said he got beat by Manny Pacquiao and took his hairstyle. Damn. Oh man, I was like, "Damn!" That's I said, "I thought he looked like one of El DeBarge's like, like a like a third cousin." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I couldn't stop. I I literally the whole time I was like, and then our guy Martrell, I was yeah. like, man, I can't stop. He goes, me too. But <laughs> Yeah, was that uh what do we think? Initial I think, thoughts. I think um what I what I liked was um the efficiency from him. I think Keith in his prime and and he didn't look like 100% that guy, but in his prime, he wasted a lot of movement uh with the lateral movement. Sometimes he'd get up on his bike and I don't know if it's because the legs are slowing down that's forcing him to do this, but I like the way he was stepping over and pivoting, no wasted movement, ducking was, under some shots. Yeah, he was more efficient and if he can somehow get back to what, you know, in terms of the explosiveness and the speed of what he was in his 20s mixed with this new kind of veteran smarts and the efficiency, he, he could be a real problem. And, and he still, I still, this fight, what it did successfully do is make me take him seriously in the division again. Mm. No, he's not a favorite over Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford. Mm. I don't think he's a favorite over Jerron Ennis, but he's, he's a legit, he showed me, okay, he's still a player. He's still got something to t- in the tank. If he's really serious about it, then you got to get back in the ring by June or July. You got to fight in the summer. And, and even if it ain't for the biggest money in the world that you want, if you're really serious about becoming the king of the division like you were once again, you got to fight a Butayev in June or in July. Then maybe you're ready for, for the winner of Spence and uh, Ugas. But I think, I think, you know, he's back in the mix. And his, his, his jab was good. His, his timing is kind and shout out to Mario Barrios because there was a number of times in this fight where he threw the right counter at the right time, and Keith got away from it anyways. Mm-hmm. Barrios, he opened up more in this fight than he did against Davis. He came in more confident and comfortable, and he took more chances in this fight. He fought a good fight. But Thurman um, just seems, a, again, not as explosive as before, but more intelligent. And, and maybe, maybe it's because Barrios is a guy who was a 140-pounder. But I seen guys like Leonard Bundu and Colazzo make him uncomfortable, mm-hmm. and he was never uncomfortable. There so was one body shot. That's that what I I, I I do like the <laughs> I do like this at 33, yeah. and uh, I like I, less waste move. If he could somehow combine what he had in his 20s with this, he could be Errol Spence. And, and I'm gonna take from what you said, great performance. But what what Sean Porter always looks for the first round. Keith Thurman usually come out to take your heart. I didn't see that. He wasn't coming to take this dude's heart in the first round. It was just like kind of getting back into it, getting the rust off. And I, Mario's was there to fight and I think gave him hell. But then what I did like is Keith's defense. Mm-hmm. His defense and ring IQ, like you said, was up to par yeah. last night. 
that was that was special, but I didn't see the killer instinct no more. That one time is gone. Well, he said, I don't think it's there no he more. He said after the fight, what it is is he doesn't trust the gas tank. Is he he he's like I would hit him with a big shot, and the next step for me in the next fight is to get that cardio up to where every time I land that shot, then it's press him. Press them for yeah. a sequence and then get back to boxing. I learned from Wade that that's actually in the training. <clears throat> Excuse me. We 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 did it without we we did it without knowing that we were doing it until we were with Wade and then Wade showed us like you know taught me about uh, the energy systems and how those energy systems work and basically you have to you have to redline yourself and go beyond that red line a little while longer and then pull back and that's how you train your systems to raise and as long as what uh i wasn't talking to either y'all but there were Perfect. multiple moments <laughs> there were multiple moments in the fight where keith could have put his foot on the gas pedal yes and made something happen yes. guess what that 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 three punch combination boom that's the red line in training he's got to go past that red line and do it consistently over and over and over i've been there, i've done that it got harder to do the older i got it's it's it, it's hard. It's it's actually kind of scary because you know that if I don't if I don't drop this dude, especially in camp, if I don't if I don't if I don't hurt this dude, he's coming right back at me. You know what I mean? So you he has to start redlining himself in training and taking himself to that point of understanding. I've been there. When when, when you get in the ring, I've been there. I can do it. There were multiple moments. I think it was you I was talking yep. to. Yeah, it was you I was talking to. There were multiple moments that he could have put his foot on the gas or should have put his foot on the gas pedal and come close to finishing the job. I don't think it's necessarily that he doesn't have the killer instinct. I think it's that his, we've matured, our bodies have changed, and he feels something now that when he was younger, didn't care about. How do I know? Because I didn't care about it when I was younger. I got to a point where I started to care. And I was like, I knew, like, I could feel what was going on. And I, I had conversations with myself, like, yo, you got to go through it. If you don't go through it, you're not going to be ready for the fight. Keith has to go through it in the training. He's not that killer instinct that he used to see. There were moments where he just, he didn't give a damn what his body felt mentally. Killer instinct. Mm -hmm. I'm going for it. And it's like, that's what's lost. It's not necessarily the killer instinct. It's, now he's more conscious of what's going on, and he doesn't want to feel it. He's got to feel it in training. Yo, the one thing, Keith, Keith Thurman's ring IQ is underrated. Yeah, right? yes. absolutely. I, that, I'm sorry, but that's why I was throwing it so hard, yeah. like, this week and this weekend, was I was trying to get people to understand, like, this dude's smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a smart fighter. I disagree with you on this one point that he didn't come out to take his heart. He threw three punches out the gate. He didn't wait. I ain't want to. Yeah, he did. He yeah. did. I ain't want to. I ain't want to step on you, but hey, yo, but he's stepping. He on, he so. jumped at him. Smash him. He, I mean, he jumped at him to <laughs> see what he had. He wanted to see what Barrios had to offer, and Barrios hit him with a straight right. Keith backed up and was like, "All right, mm. I'm in the fight." And that's how it goes yeah. with Keith. But but Keith, that's how it goes like like Keith. Roy from Florida, right? They they that's their mo. They like to touch you with something big early, and if you're still there, but they just want to get you detain you. Yep. And but, then, right. But what Keith, Keith didn't do that against Manny. No, right? no, 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 no. Keith waited. And that's he, what he, put knew him on what he, was, he knew what he was in with Manny, though. Yeah, he knew, he knew but, he was in with a legend. But after 931 days off, to do that suggested, all right, Keith's here to fight. And that's what I want. That's what I wanted mm -hmm. to see. I didn't want yeah. to see a guy that was rusty. I wanted to see a guy that's going to find out what Mario Barrios had to offer. Because we know Mario is going to come to fight. Yeah, we know right. that. We know he's there to get hit, too. It's not like Mario Barrios is there like a defensive wizard. Is Keith wanted to find out what he had. Keith heard him at least three times in that fight. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it felt like Keith hesitated, like he kind of fainted, and then he backed off. And I don't know if that was more so he was worried about getting countered or walking into something, or what you mentioned, if he wasn't sure he could push it past that red line to get him out of yeah, there. That's what he said. And at one yeah. time, I felt like he had him like days. He had him like hurt. He, he, he was him. saying it was his gas tank. He had Bambi legs a couple times. Yeah. Mario did. And that's, that's okay. But I think, you know, a lot of us become so accustomed to Keith being one time. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know about one time. You ain't putting away guys like that. And I think after he fought you, after he fought Danny, after he fought, he got hurt by Colazzo, He got hurt by Jose Cito Lopez. And then I think his ring IQ was like, all right, I can't just knock people out. I got to box. Mm -hmm. And I can win by boxing. I think Keith can beat almost anybody by boxing because he's smart. Mm-hmm. But I'm a little concerned, like, when you got a guy that's dead to rights, not even dead to rights, that's a little hurt, and you don't step on the gas to see where his heart's at. Yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah. I think he he can't run into a fight with Spencer Ugas after this. Mm -mm. He needs another fight. Fight uh, Butaya, maybe Stan Jonas. Them, the, if you go after going through twelve rounds of pressure with those guys, you're good. Yeah, all I, that rust will be. That's gone. exactly what it is with yeah. Stan Jonas. Yeah. Butaev, I, I, I got a feeling he could get Butaev out of there, but Stan Yones is going to be That's there. Tough. Right. And you know who's looking at this yeah. fight and was like, mm, I want a piece of that. Boots. Oh, yeah. He wants yeah. a piece yeah. of everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah we Boots know. But they don't want a piece but of them. Boots wanted nope. Sean. Sean ducked him and retired. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I think if you, if you talk to Jaron Ennis right now and asked him <laughs> anyone at 147 or 154, he's like, yep. Yep, make the fight. <laughs> you got it. Make the fight. I'm down, down for it. But that's a star making performance for, for Boots. He Absolutely. looks at the oh, – because he's still sure. got a name, of course. Of course. Right? You know, former unified champion, a guy who could fight that was knocking people out. Boots looks at that young. He's like, that, and that's a hell of a fight. Does it get made? Probably not. Yeah. Not in the near future. But I think Keith did enough. I wrote a piece called this Keith Thurman's last stand. Because if he didn't look good in this fight, that might have been a Boots opponent. Where, where can we find that? Sportingnews.com? Oh, Sportingnews.com, baby. And, and, and you know who <laughs> lost himself into a Boots fight is Barrios. Huh? He oh, lost God. himself oh, into a Boots no. fight. Oh, he lost <laughs> himself into a Boots <laughs> fight. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. That fight would be ugly for Barrios. Yes, it would. But, that, but he'll be there to fight. No, he's not for, not for long. I, I know. But I'm just long. saying. If it's 30 seconds, it's 30 seconds. Yeah. Okay, give him a man's He'll be in the ring to fight. Yeah. But it's, it's, where, where's my single? I got something to say. Right here. Right? No, you're right here. I'm right here. Yeah. No, you're right you're here. I'm right here. You're out of control. Okay. All right, you're right there. Go <laughs> the ahead. One, you're, but, okay. Yeah. It's, it's He's coming back. Yep. There you go. I got scared. I'm not gonna say it anymore. Oh, oh you got oh, no, you have to. Hell now. no. I thought I, I'm not gonna lie to you. No. I thought for Sit a second you said I got scared of boots. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Me too. I thought I mean it's true, but you don't say that. You gotta come back. And you know I don't even want you to come back. Boots is overrated. Whoa. Whoa. No, you don't want us to get Whoa. carried away. You got to see something. He's Boots is overrated. Whoa. Get the hell out of town. Whoa. Sean, Sean, you shut your mouth too over there. Sean, man. I think he's the most gifted that was fighter bullshit. in boxing. But when he's getting caught, he's getting caught clean. With on the when, Even DeLorean, we tagged. He's not getting caught here with the chip. He's getting caught on the button. And that is a problem. Um, but I wonder if he was moving in for the kill when he got hit with that. But he might... Either either he's gonna have a Philly chin that's I'm so good. Right I, ain't gonna, I, ain't gonna, I can tell you how. I'm hot. I said it. I'm shocked. The words, I'm actually. I'm shocked. Those words came out of your mouth. That's I know crazy. you are. But listen, I'm. Boots is overrated, and this is why I say he's that's overrated. Crazy. Everybody is ho is so hyped up on him, but he hasn't been in the ring with any world champions yet. Well, they that's don't want to fight him. Sean. Huh? That's how it goes. They got hyped about you guys before you that's got. True. That's how. That's boxing. But I feel like it's, it's... It's how you build your fighter. And and don't forget that I'm the one that said that, or one of the ones that said this dude is is the closest thing we got to Roy Jones. I'm, I've am i said that. I'm on record. I believe that. But at the how same time... How is it overrated? When, because, because every name that you throw out and, and oh, Boots and Smash him. Oh, Boots and Smash right. Damn, like, let the fight happen. And say Boots smashed him. Or, man, that was a great fight. Boots did well. But don't, but don't blatantly boots will smash everybody in the 147 pound boots division. Boots is basically what Earl Spence was. They Earl was gonna smash you. He's gonna smash everybody. I wasn't listening to that. I was. <laughs> I, I was. So what they said? Yeah. He could so get, what they said? He could get <laughs> a Virgil Ortiz fight, and somehow Virgil could stop him. You never know. This is the boxing game, but it's the hype that he has the hype train. Well, what did this dude in my ear talking about? Oh, boots is smash. Boots is smash. You're telling me. Let's be honest. So you, you made your, your bold statement. That was crazy. They fight right oh, now. Oh, that was my uh, oh. my bold statement in yeah. 2022, by the way. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so they so if he fights Mario Barrios next fight, summer, how does the fight go? Be honest. Tell me how the fight goes. He smashes him. Yeah, <laughs> he smashes him. I didn't, I didn't say Jerron Ennis beats every fighter at welterweight or at 54. I this think is, he smashes Barrios. So then let me clean it up. I believe that Boots is overrated in everybody's mind because of the way that everybody Ooh. talks about Boots. Everybody talks about Boots as if... He's going to smash everybody that he gets in the ring with, not giving anybody a chance. Oh, Terrence Crawford don't want to see Boots. Oh, Errol Spence Jr. don't want to see Boots. It's like when you got oh, Ugas don't right? want to see it's Boots. It's like when you got something like, new. But we fight him and we and you hyped about it. It's like everybody said it. Oh, my kid is so smart. Your kid is dumb as a box of rocks. But it's still, relax, okay? This is one of those things. Like you got something new. It's like it looks so good, <laughs> so shiny. It got all the things. But, but aren't there? But aren't there? 
Aren't there just guys like that though? Mm-hmm. Like, aren't there special talents? Is Roy, was Roy Jones? Not Roy a was the guy, and, and Boots is the next guy. But yeah. I, I just I needed to start happening. It just I needed to happen. You need him in a fight. Opposed to people you just. Need him in a fight. I'm just tired of hearing oh, it. Right, do, right. do we transition that into our, our top five in welterweight right now? Let's do it real quick. Hey, we got to get some security on Sean. He might get clipped. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, who you got? I got Earl Spence. Say it on three. Oh. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> no, we're not, That's we're never, not doing that, this, that will never, Whether we're in this studio, a different studio, or outside, that will never happen. All right, you go. I got Earl Spence Jr., number one. I got uh, Terrence Crawford, number one. Okay. Terrence yeah. Crawford. Uh, I, I got Spence as the, the man. He's I thought you was going to say I got Earned. boots. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I got Crawford as, as the toughest guy to beat, but Spence is the champion of the division. Okay. You know, Andreas, you put you in the work. Top dog, Walter Wade. Earl, right there. Okay. Yeah. I got I got Bud next. Okay. Then I will have Boots. Er. <laughs> <laughs> er. Overrated. Oh, that's Boots. Spence next. Yeah, Spence. Crawford. Okay. Yeah, so we just flip flop. Yeah. 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 Okay. They're like 1A and 1B. 1A, one yeah, exactly. Third third is where it gets interesting. Mm-hmm. Because you ha- you feel like you kind of have to give it to Ugas because he's got a belt. Yeah, and that that's tough where I'm just yeah. like, we go to the hypothetical fight game. I don't think he beats. I'm not sure Ugas beats Keith Thurman. Right, right. And yeah. I'm not. I don't think he beats Boots. So it's like. Do I give him the nod because he's the champion? Maybe. We, hey, what, I almost what feel the like we should we do, do with two Danny different Garcia? rankings. Like, like we say on paper, we give it to, to Ugas. Right. On paper. So you got three. I, I, would, I would give the nod to Ugas as the champion. As would I. Yeah, same. Boots. On paper. Boots. Yeah. Boots. Okay. You got no, I'm, boots put, three. I'm, going, I'm, I'm going not boots even mad three. at that. I'm not even mad at that. I'm, I'm going boots three. I'm giving it to Ugas just because the way yeah. he fought Manny coming off of that performance. I mean, you got to kind of give it to him, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Like, Manny, I hate doing boxing math like this. Of course. But Manny fought Keith the way he fought, and Manny had no idea what to do with Ugas. He was stuck. Ugas yeah. was a tough fight, and everybody knew it the moment he stepped into it. So I got to give him the, the number three. And I worried that night, uh, almost the top five would have all beat Manny Pacquiao that night. Mm-hmm. Earl Spence would have stopped him. Very possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, yeah. man, let's be honest. When that, that, I felt bad for Errol not getting that fight because that was his coming out party. Yep, yeah. that was the one that he was too big. Take him he, out of he here, was man. Too big. He's too big for Manny. That's the one thing. Like Manny's so small, and he gets hit a lot. And Errol knew. Why the hell are you getting in here with me? Yeah, okay. And, like damn. Like I, Errol, I think Errol would have hurt Manny in that yeah. fight. I agree because yeah. Errol knows kind of how to walk people into punches, mm. and Manny's a little reckless when he comes in, mm. and he, I don't know if he can handle what Errol's going to give him. I felt bad for Errol, but Ugas did. When everybody said, I thought Manny would win that fight, but after watching that fight, that's why I have Ugas number three. Like, he fought an excellent fight that night. Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel like people are talking to you, but not to you? Like, when he said, <laughs> Errol knows how to walk people into punches, yeah. do, you, do you feel like, Damn, maybe he's talking to me a little bit? I didn't bit. think he was talking nah. to me, but I was like, I, I did definitely was like, hey, because you know, like, when, the moment sometimes when you're doing like a, you're like talking about a fighter and they're showing you like get hit, I'm like, yes, that's not pleasant. That's yeah. not a good thing. <laughs> I think when it's all said and done, that still might have been his toughest fight ever. Was you when it's all said? Oh, yeah. absolutely. And I think yeah. he he would have never took it again. Yeah, no, he would have did everything to avoid because your style is like perfect for him. Mm. That that fight for him, I remember talking to Errol that week before I talked to you, and Errol he didn't want to like. I was like, do you think this is an easy fight? Because I did this with Caleb before he fought Canelo. This Caleb was like, everybody's scared of Canelo before they get in the ring. Mm-hmm. I was like, you got the wrong mindset. It ain't got nothing to do with what happens before. It's what everybody sees once they get inside the ring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Errol kind of alluded the same thing. And I was like, but you ain't fought nobody like Sean yet. And I think like three rounds in that fight, you could see Errol go back to this corner and was like, damn. Yeah, we, we This ain't what I was. I ain't ready for this. I ain't know it was going to come before, like this. My only frustration with that fight is that Errol afterwards said, well, I told you I was just going to sit there and bang with him. And I was like, but at some point, you didn't have a choice. That wasn't the fight you wanted yeah. to fight. At and some then, point, there was no choice. All credit to him. He, he did, but. That yeah. was hell. No, he went course. through hell and back. He went through hell. Sean made him fight a fight that he did not yeah. want to fight. And there's a lot of fighters who get comfortable and be like, I'm fighting my fight. I'm yeah. cool with that. When After that fight, when Errol was talking about, oh, we don't need to do a rematch, like, you don't want the rematch. Because yeah. <laughs> that wasn't fun. Yeah. There's a lot of fighters who say that, oh, I'll take the rematch because they think they could beat you the second. You can yeah. see it on Errol's face. I don't want that fight again. And then that it's rematch would have been like, well, go ahead and box him from the outside then. If, yeah. if say if you, could, you could say you could box him out. people and do that it. always says Sean's not a Hall of Famer because he only got, he won two titles. How many Hall of Fame fights does Sean have? Yo. That's what you got to ask yourself. Who got, there's a the, lot of fighters that's Hall of Famers who haven't had though. Hall of Fame fights I'm, like Sean. I'm sorry. I, I'm not doing this because I'm here and we friends, yeah. but who's got a better resume than you in the Westway division? Outside of Manny, and now that Manny's gone, who's mm-hmm. fought the, everybody at 47? Mm-hmm. Nobody. Everybody. And there's never been a fight that you haven't been in. Mm-hmm. There's never been a fight. Mm-hmm. 
who who else can say that? Who else at 47 is close to say that? Arrow yeah. hasn't fought everybody. He's the guy that in the era where nobody kind of reached their potential, he did because Spence Thurman didn't happen. Spence Crawford hasn't happened. And Sean's the only one that got the most out of himself, who who ex who has been a, who gets to retire with no questions left. Mm -hmm. You are the you glue know? of that division. A lot of yeah, that's funny you said that. I've heard that, but a lot of people over this weekend they were. You like, made the transition from Floyd real easy. Huh? The, you made the transition from Floyd Mayweather uh -huh. real easy. I credit Keith with that to an extent, but I yes, agree. definitely. Yeah, but because we was worried, what the hell's gonna happen in oh, 47? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all the time. You but guys this, are the same era, obviously. Yeah. You and Keith. this weekend, everybody's like, "You got to come back. You got to come, yeah, come back. We want you to come back. We want you to come back." I got the most, everything that I could get out of what I did and what I had. Rolled up the toothpaste. Yeah. It was all the way towards yeah. the end. It was done. Yeah. Put the, Nothing put the, else put in the there. water in the ketchup. Yeah. And the soap, water in the yeah, soap. Yeah, put the water in the soap. Yeah, so I, we did, got, I did some broke So stuff. we all have Ugas 3. <laughs> Ant has boots. Um, yeah. I would probably have boots fourth. Yeah. Same. Maybe ahead of Keith. Ugas and then Ortiz fifth and Thurman sixth. Oh. oh I got Thurman. Virgil over Keith? Yeah. That'd be a good fight. It'd be a hell of a fight. Yeah, that's yeah. a good fight. I think Virgil's a little underrated right now. I think Virgil's underrated because he beat the piss out of Mo Hooker, and yeah, I was just did. like, "Yo, yeah. Virgil has terrible defense. He does. He does. <laughs> he, does. <laughs> he does. I don't he does. think he it's, 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 not, it's it's terrible. It's he just bad. blocks punches with he, his face. No, he's it's not bad. I get it. <laughs> no, I mean, he's, he's defensive. He's responsible. The hands come back. He's irresponsible. He's got shit to still work on, but he's not like defense. He's not Arturo Gotti. What? Okay, yeah. he's not making you know he's not making Ward. What's yeah. up with his dad? Does he's he just the, want his own know. personal trainer for his son? What's up with that situation? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I hear he might be. You know, he's, he's he may be working he's with Manny more. Robles. That's yeah, enough for uh, and there was those rumors about Reynoso, but I heard he, he's had some 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 uh, sparring under Manny Robles, who was an underrated trainer who got Andy Ruiz to be the yeah. first Mexican heavyweight champion ever, and then. Shortly thereafter, you know, then, wasn't able to keep and going. Virgil has Michael McKinson next coming up. Um, that's fight that ah, yeah, I, I have boots fourth and Keith. Fifth. I, he should be fighting Rashidi Ellis. You love that Rashidi Ellis fight, and I, you think, got, he, I think he loses to Rashidi Ellis. You gotta get if you're gonna Virgil fight. Virgil Ortiz? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think he loses to Rashidi Ellis. You already said. I, I don't think so, but but Ellis is good. Yeah, yeah, you're talking he, to the guy that Vir, <laughs> he said the Virgil Ortiz might lose the, or might be Terrence Crawford. But he gotta fight Ellis yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you spar? No, I'm not sparring anyone. I'm not, spar I'm, not spar I'm not sparring a chair. I'm not sparring any of these cameras here. I walk into a camera, I'm falling, knocked out, clean. Um, yeah, no, I, I, that'd be a good fight, though. Um, Rashidi and Virgil. But, yeah, I think that kind of, kind of is the top five. Um, welterweight, as always, there's interesting matchups. What are you waving like Well, that? you know, we're, we're, we're here at Blue Wire Studios. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right you know, here in the wind much, casino, and we have fans walking by and yeah. much credit we're waving politely. As we gay, Keith, Keith might have one of the worst bodies in other than and, me. And, and boxing, he, his body is made out of the same thing Amir Khan Chin is made out of. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, was it? Uh, he recovers though. The junior was it? Uh, he, Keith Chavez does recover junior. though. Yeah, but Chavez Junior. Heart is made out of and oh, uh, dang. Oh, yeah. Sergio Martinez durability. Oh dang! All oh, made God. out of the same material. Dang! It just crumbles that away. Was, that was a wild diss song. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Keith, Keith's like the the defense that it's easy to get them in the red zone, but you're not gonna put it in. You're not gonna score the touchdown. He it looks bend like but you don't can, break. Yeah, he's a bend but don't. My break. man takes his mouthpiece out. <laughs> Be tripping. I, what is up with that? I don't know. You was real pissed off about that. I'm I always pissed off at him, man. Something wrong with him. I mean, they say, I think he took his mouthpiece out again. I was like, no, he didn't do it again. Yeah. He surely did. Yeah. He, I think he figured out that he can do it, so now he just that's, does it. That's not a TKO? It should be. Because <laughs> yeah, they let him get away with it twice. Yeah. Yeah. It should be illegal, huh? You're not even talking close to your microphone. Well, you know. It'll, it'll come to me. <laughs> Wait, it, I'm not sure that the studio is that sophisticated. That there's an automatic <laughs> mic that's going to come to you. But, yeah, it keeps by. I mean, that's something... You and I mentioned yesterday, if somehow he did fight Errol, Errol is chopping body his body shots. in half. Yeah, he gonna he's going to Darth break Maul, slice his ass in half. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that, that's the, uh, just a glaring weakness. But yeah. also, glaring. if you can't get to it, doesn't really matter much. <laughs> like if you can't land that body shot, doesn't do you much good anyway. So What, what you got versus, uh, I told what, what's the outcome, Spence versus Thurman? Spence got, wins. No, he I, doesn't stop him, but he wins. I got him stop, stop it. I think that that is probably the most interesting fight for Keep right now. Yeah, I agree. 
Uh, I got Spence right now, but let me see Thurman, you know, get another fight in. Okay. When are they fighting? If this fight were to happen next? Yeah. Right. Yeah, next. I'm going next and fall. Spence might hurt. I, yeah. I, I Keith needs another fight. Mm -hmm. Okay. He needs another fight. I always say this about a lot of fighters. I'm not sure about you until you get hit in the mouth one really mm -hmm. good time. And he, Keith's had such a, a long layoff. Like, Barrios wasn't going to hit him in the one really good time. Yeah. But he did catch him a couple times, and I felt like Keith was like, oh. So I don't know if, you know, if Arrow hits him with one. I don't think he stops him, but I think either way, Arrow, Arrow wins that fight. Question, Mr. Porter? Yeah, how come, how come uh, Keith needs another fight, but Arrow don't? Oh, Arrow needs another fight, too. Because hey, I don't think Arrow wants another Arrow fight. Arrow fresh off the pavement. Oh, no. I, I, I just think, I think <laughs> Keith, Keith, when, Keith, when he comes back, he's been very clear. He kind of need, not a lighter touch because that's, dis, I think, disrespectful to yeah. an extent. But, like, Errol, we've talked about before, no matter what he's coming back from, he's like, nah, bump that. I want no All tune up. to Earl Spence. Give me the toughest fight. So. Can Keith afford it? Because he got hurt last night. Can he afford to get in there with a contender and get hurt and possibly stop? That's what I'm saying. That's yeah, why. Can he afford it? This I is boxing. Probably. 931 days is a long layoff, though. Yeah. You know, like he looked good fighting 12 rounds. It's just, I mean, he mentioned at the press conference that he wants another fight, right? Yeah. Before he wants to. I mean, oh, he said it. He, he, yeah. You know, he did it in a way, if it comes across, you know, maybe, but yeah, pretty much. The, I mean, the timing too. You yeah. I mean, obviously, if Ugas and, and, and Spence were fighting in April. They're rumored yeah, I mean, for April. Yeah. I mean, you look at the timing, it seems like Keith wants to get back in there in the summer, get you another fight. But it is dangerous when you fight the wrong person, you get hurt again. It's like. Yeah. Because then, then you kind of wasted. Yeah. Man, maybe I could have just. Got hurt by the other guy. And got the, the big guy. payday, right. Yeah. But it's it, it showed that'll show the commitment long term. You know, like is it about the bag or or do you want to give yourself the best chance to become champ again too and not not just get the bag? Because if that's the chance, you gotta play the long game a little bit. Like let me get let me get this fight in, even if it's gonna pay me a mil as opposed to the five mil. Yeah. But it, it's gonna give me a better chance long. I don't know. Yeah. It's not fun to count other people's pockets. It's not, it's not, it's not. <laughs> the, the two people that I would campaign to get a championship fight tomorrow would be Keith Thurman and Luis Ortiz. King Kong Ortiz? I think the time <laughs> time is running out for both of those gentlemen. Oh, God. Okay. Definitely okay. Luis Ortiz. Well, he's got to fight Andy Ruiz. That's yeah. the fight. It's, on, on, yeah. I think. Dang. Yeah. And then the winner. I don't think he'll ever a title shot. I don't think he'll ever get to a I, I don't either. And I, I'm sad about that. I am but, sad. I'm, I don't know yeah, if I'm you can disappointed tell. about that. Yeah. But yeah. Um I think that kind of wraps up the weekend. The the fights. Yeah. For the fight, yeah, the yeah. fight portion. We got a special portion. special guest in the got building. Special guest. Okay. Hey, I want Andres. Hip -hop, can, hip -hop. Can, you, can you introduce our uh our uh, other guests that we have here? Oh man. Our other guests. Don't put no pressure on me, rap. Don't do that. I've known him for mad long, at least a decade now. Dang. One of the best MCs. I, I don't like doing this. I don't like to do the female MC thing. Yeah. She's one of the best MCs in the game. Boom, Point boom. blank, period. Grammy nominated. At least two classic albums under her belt. Mm. Uh, and was part of Sean's final entrance. Mm -hmm. the, the, the amazing, spectacular Rhapsody mm -hmm. is with us. Hey, what up? <sighs> hey. Oh! Rap on the portaway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> special, special. Uh, like, man, I, I, I'm i sorry. I'm, I'm just going to hold this for a second. Do it. Because, like, when I see rap, like, I've known rap for a while. But it's it's one thing when you see MCs that are dope and fulfill their potential, right? Like, because you, I, I saw it in you early. Mm -hmm. But it's another thing when they're still the same person that they were when you first met them. Mm -hmm. And the day that I met rap, I was like, I just love her. Her energy yeah. is incredible. Yeah. And it's a decade later, and I was like, she ain't yeah. got to talk to me. She got Grammy nominations. She, yeah. she over here doing songs with Queen Latifah. She ain't got to talk to me, but she's still the same person. And we'll talk about the ring interest, but when I, you know, when I called you, I was like, man, she might be too busy for me. What's happy. good, Rap? What's up? I'm happy to be here. Man, listen, I'm, I'm happy that you're here. Uh, and I, I know you you met a couple of my family, and uh, they actually yeah. out there. When they, they, when they, they said, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they're my cousins now. <laughs> right, so they, so they on the on the low. My my friend Ama, she was like, I didn't know you knew her like that. I said, I don't. <laughs> I said, but she mad cool. She just like us, so we let's just roll with it. And we've been rolling ever since, man. Straight you up. are the best. Nah, you the best. Nah. we all the best together. I I'm told Cat and you. That's all. I told Dre like I'm big on energy, and I felt your energy. Yeah. I was like, oh, I rock with Sean. Yeah. Because I'm in album mode, and I don't come outside. Oh snap! Yeah. 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 I told Dre I was like, 
you know I don't do this right. Like, <laughs> when I'm in album mode. Nobody can't get me to come out. So yeah. the fact that I came out here for three days with yeah. you, that, that just lets you know how much I love Dang, you. Dang, look, yo. Oh, why you do yeah. that? <laughs> Dang. Yo, you good people. That's, that's, like, that's <laughs> like you leaving camp. Yeah. Breaking yeah. camp. Yeah. yeah well, thank you. Who would I break camp for? Thank you. No, I wouldn't break him for you. I, I know. I, 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 know. Hey, bro, I respect it. I told him, I said, when I get back, though, I'm not coming outside. Yeah, no more. wow. <laughs> That's what's up. I know but you told I me you're working know. on the album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have a release date? I have one in mind, but I never say yeah. because people hold you to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, that to be determined is all they got to get from you. Yeah. You'll get it, when, you'll get it yeah. when you get it. You know, I wake up some days, I'm like, I'm I'm almost done. And I wake up some days, I'll be like, we starting all over today. Dang. <laughs> so it's a process. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, hey, let's get into it real quick. I had explained to everybody last week, listen, this is a boxing weekend. And for me, I'm trying to make it as big as possible. Keeps the guy in my mind, and I'm like, yo, if he's coming to town, that means some tickets going to be sold. There's going to be some people here. Let me get some of my people in, and let's do a big. So happens, happy birthday, Amma. Happened her birthday was this week, and then my mom, and then I asked my mom to come in. She out there. What's up, mama? Happy birthday, mama? Yeah. No, nah, it ain't her birthday. She's just here. <laughs> But yeah, she got a birthday this happy, year. Happy early birthday. Happy birthday so, it's, in yeah. it's in June or July. Don't matter. Don't wow. <laughs> it's in June. It's in June. Wow. And then and then it just kind of became this thing where I'm inviting everybody in. Yeah. I looked at my wife. I said, look, nobody. This is the last. This is the last of the Mohicans. I'm not inviting nobody else in. But you know, we got down on the on the um on the ATVs, the razors. <laughs> yeah. And that was a good, it was a good time. It was you a kept, good time. You kept it it wasn't as much adrenaline <laughs> yeah. as it was supposed to be. But yeah. It was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> And and, and 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 how you feel about it, Andres? What the ATV? Yeah. I mean, at first I was like, we gonna be jumping the rap. No, I was like, <laughs> Andre was scared as hell. Yeah, I was like, man. we gonna be popping wheelies. We gonna flip over. Yeah. I got family at home. I don't want to die. Yeah. And then we got in there, and I was like, oh, we going twenty miles an hour. We was on a scenic you it was route. Gonna be the Rough Riders. I know. I know. I know. I'm you like, it was gonna be the Rough Riders anthem video. Yeah. I thought we popping wheelies. Sean, that's not us. I wasn't there. I thought we was no, gonna be it, doing jumps over sand yeah, yeah. I promise, doing? like, and I I have this in my mind is crazy. So I'm like. The whole drive, I'm trying to get myself, don't think, just drive, because I was so livid at how slow we were going. And, and then I thought we had left some of our people behind, like the three, the four the four singles took off by ourselves. I'm like, damn, like we left our people behind. I had somebody come out fly a drone. They not going to get me, you know what I mean? <laughs> All this and that. And so we was, we were going slow. I'm like, I'm not going to say nothing to nobody else and kill it for nobody else. Like, Y'all had never done it before, so I'm like, if they enjoying it, then I'm enjoying it. Right. And then I told my guy, Renee, shout out to Renee. He yeah. was in the first seat, right? Okay. So the guy gets out and tells, <laughs> tells Renee, I can only go as fast as the slowest driver. And so... Somebody's out there using blinkers? What so, the hell was going on? <laughs> so basically what happened was the, the leader yeah. was, was here, and, and Renee's supposed to be here, but Renee kept falling oh, back. Oh, Renee was slacking. Okay. So so when we got to switch, the week we got to we, we got to the spot. I said, "Yo, let me let me get that let me get that front step, that front spot right quick." He was like, "All right." We took off and it was on after that. <laughs> but for a minute, man, I was like, "I don't even want to be here, man. This is embarrassing. <laughs> I might ask for my 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 money back." I said, "They ain't getting no love on the podcast." Like all these is going through my mind. <laughs> I, all of it. I was like, "I ain't getting no love on the podcast." It's like, oh, you, well, you flying the drone for your podcast? I was like, yeah, you ain't going to be on it. <laughs> all that. All that. But I, I feel like we finished strong. Did you, you know tell him what, what happened strong. last time? No, I ain't tell him. Oh, I ain't, oh, ain't oh, tell him. Oh, I ain't want to scare nobody. Sean was from here to that wall from <laughs> dying. That's, that, that's What you do, bro? That's true, actually. Flip four times. Don't say dying, though. Don't say dying. <laughs> you oh, you so. done fighting. You flip your flip door. Four times in front of me. Oh, Stop. <laughs> I almost didn't make it and, to the second baby. And, I didn't flip and, four times. And, and, Slow and, down. And, and How many? Three? Slow once. <laughs> look, 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 look. And when we flipped, I was so I was so confident that we was going to go all the way back and be straight. Look, we went doom, doom. And when we was coming up, I said, we got it. No, we don't. <laughs> His co like was 6'5", 400 pounds. That's true. Oh, Is man. he four? Yeah, that's, oh, that's, 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 that's gonna kill me. That seemed crazy. But he was big. <laughs> oh, it was off in weight. Yeah. So, <laughs> and so we look. had to get the jaws of life, jaws of life to get him out. <laughs> they had to cut him out of there. Yeah, we had to cut him out. <laughs> oh, no, nah, I said, I said, Toby, you alright? He said, Yeah, I'm cool, man. You alright? I said, Yeah, I'm good. He said, I think I got a concussion. I said, No, you don't, man. Don't say that. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> 
Man, who if, are you again? If Dre had known that, there's no way he would have. Oh no, if I'd have knew that, yeah, oh, nah. So that's what I thought y'all did. Uh-uh, yeah, nah. no, if I'd have known that, I would have been riding with rap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got this. I gotta live. I gotta get home. And explain this one to my wife. I ain't trying to die. So then we did. Uh, so then we did the paintballing. I mm-hmm. missed that. That bro. was smooth. She ducked us. Yeah, hey, man. I feel like she ducked us. It was a busy weekend in Vegas. Oh, you mean, was like, mode. nah, 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 nah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to get you back when you're not, when you're not cutting the album. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it yeah, after. Yeah. When the album release, we'll have you back, Straight back up. out. That's what we're going to yeah. celebrate. Yeah, we'll have you Absolutely. back out with that when the album release. That's a jacked up way to celebrate getting shot with paintball. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Pop, pop, pop. yeah, I was all concerned. I was like, I heard that hurt. Sean was like, who told you that? Black people? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. I said that. I said that. I said that. I said it. It only hurt for 15 seconds. But we had a good time. Yeah, that was a good time. And the and the other main reason to bring you out was just to show you mad love. Mad. So let's go back real quick. We're gonna tell this quick story, then we gonna then we're gonna get out of here. Yeah. All right. So our uh shout out to um to uh uh who's doing my shirts and stuff? Uh, 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 uh Looptify. Shout out to Looptify. Um when when I was getting with Looptify, we hadn't even papered anything, pen, penned anything yet, and they were like, Hey, who what are you gonna do for your walkout? Yeah. I said, um, oh, man, I don't know, but I gotta do something. I got and I knew this was gonna be my last one, so I'm like, I gotta do something big, right? And they said, Well, what about the Jabberwockies walk you out? I said, boom, hit them up. Hit them up. And we I I had been waiting weeks to to find out whether or not we were gonna do it. And this was the week before the fight. A couple weeks before the fight. Nah, nah, okay. no, nah, I'm talking about when we put our thing together. Or was this week of? No, it wasn't uh, week of. No, it was a couple weeks before. We had a little bit of time because I think we were. It had to be the week I before. I like you're making a dramatic roll with it. Yeah, right. we're, we're going to make it dramatic. It was, it was, it was the, the week before, was the, the, week before <laughs> the fight. We had to fly her in. Seven whole days. Well, time was running short, to <laughs> yeah. say the least. And so I hit my guy up and said, hey, what's going on with the Jabberwockies? They're busy. Actually, with Dave Chappelle, I believe. They're busy and they can't do it. So I'm like, I got off the phone with them. I'm on the highway driving home. I'm like, dang, I got to do something. And Big E comes to mind. I said, Biggie, I've already done that. Like, I'm not really, you yeah, know, repetitive. I'm yeah. not a repetitive dude. You know what I mean? So I'm like, nah, I can't do that. What about LL? I'm bad. I, maybe he'll walk me. <laughs> I kept thinking, I'm like, I think it's got to be Big E, right? So I hit him up, and Big E said, man, uh, I would love to do it again. I said, yeah. I said, but if we do it again, it's got to be bigger than we did it before. Yeah. I said, we can't do the same thing we did. I said, not that that wasn't good, yeah. but this one got to be big. He said, man, I'm all over it. Let's, let's hit a Bondres. We hit hit you up, and you said, "Man, I'm all for it. Let's go." And I swear to God, like this was literally the week before the fight. It was really close. Oh, it, was close. it was really close. It was close that we were on the phone every day. Yeah, that's that's, that's how close that's, it was. Yeah. So, and I think it was the week before the fight. So, you hit me up and you said, "Hey, uh, would you you want somebody to walk you out to the ring?" I said, "Nah, I think that's tacky. I I never really liked that. I've always said I never wanted." A rapper to walk me to the ring. That's what I told you. You said, all right, well, you know, think about it. It's all right. So then you threw a name at me, and I was like, all right, go for it. And and we and we couldn't get the name that you threw at me, right? But then you said, what about Rap City? Now you put me on Rap City. Sometime early 21 or 2020. Boy, that, no, it was like 19. Was it? Yeah, it's before Eve dropped, I put you on the rap. Oh, wow. This was, Layla's Wisdom was the first album I sent you for rap. And no joke, when when I first heard you, I was like, this can't be no no woman. <laughs> I get that a lot. And Bar- I heard, and I bars. heard and not only bars, but she got multiple styles. Yeah. And that, and again, not being repetitive, that gets me. When you when you dynamic and yeah. you and you got versatility, you, you look at my boxing game, versatility, you know what I mean? And so I was I was rocking with you, right? And he said, Well, what if what about Rhapsody? I said, Hold on. I said, I like her rap, I like her game, but I gotta find the right song. Mm-hmm. I said, Don't hit her up until I find the right song. So I went through your in your <laughs> the whole your whole inventory. I went through it all, Yo, right? Oh. Went through it all, right? So while I'm going through it, we figured out what we were gonna do with Big E. And you sent me a clip of Big E's first promo that he had done for WWE. Yep. And essentially, this is how it all ties together. Big E was doing was he was he basically a pastor? Yeah. So preaching. So basically, when Big E came to the WWE, they uh, they kind of just made him like the angry black wrestler for a long time, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> they put him in a faction where it was like a riff on like Kurt Franklin, like they had the choir. But Big E's always he came from a church family, so he's always had the big pastor voice. And me and him been friends for a while, 
And I was like, yo, it's like the seventh anniversary of y'all first promo before the New Day became the New Day. They were like the highest merch sellers in WWE. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And E hit me and he was like, if you, if you, you know E, he's like, woo, <laughs> I like that. And then we talked about it and I was like, yo, it's just perfect. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it, it fits perfect. Yeah. So we, we discussed that or how that would work. And he had his idea, like having the stained glass. And then we just started building on it. I think that's when you found the song. Like it all came together real quick. So, so my thing was, I, I, I am, I try to be a reflection of God. I try, when people see me, I want them to see that I'm faithful. I want them to see that God is real. I want them to see that blessings are real. Mm-hmm. Praying is real, all of that. That's what I want people to see when they see mm-hmm. me. So you really don't see that when I fight. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna always come out to gospel music. Mm-hmm. At, at the least you'll hear God. Right. At the least you'll hear, you know what I mean? Praise and worship before I get in the ring. And so I had been on that for a long time. And I was like, I don't think this is going to work with, with Rhapsody bringing me out because mm-hmm. I don't think she has like that, that kind of music. So I'm like going through your, and I seen Godzilla. <laughs> and when I saw Godzilla, I listened to it, right? And I was picturing all of it in my mind. We, we, wanted, to, we wanted Big E to be a pastor mm-hmm. preaching about Showtime Sean Porter. If you haven't seen Showtime Sean Porter, let me tell you who he is and really bring it really hard and raw and really in a, in a, in a pastoral way. You know what I mean? Yes. And I was like, we can't do that. And then I come out and you got to bleep half the words, you know, anything like that. And when I, when I heard Godzilla, I was like, I sat back. I said, I got it. I was like, <laughs> I said, hit her up. We got the song. Hit her up. And you just all love, like from day one. We hit you up. It was it was short notice for you. We told I told you exactly, you know, what we wanted to get done. And and you was able to come through and, and make it happen. Not only that, y'all, I don't know what happened with the outfit. What happened with your outfit? My outfit? Yeah. Then you you ended up like going out and buying an outfit while oh, when you got here, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my stylist was supposed to come with me, but last minute she couldn't come. So I'm like, shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, when I get there, I'm going to run to the mall because I, I had half of it. I needed the pants for yeah, like, yeah. like, And it's so hard to find black pants. <laughs> I just don't understand. It is. You know, and, and I needed a shirt. I needed both of those. Boom, boom. My, I had my brother with me. He went one way in the mall. I went the other way. <laughs> I had the coat, though. He was like, yeah. wear, wear black and orange. Oh, I was so like, fly. I got that main piece. Just let me get some black pants and, you know, a little shirt. And yeah. I, by the grace of God, like, you just let it go. And it... it it rocked out. So I'm trying to be like in fight mode, <laughs> not talk to nobody, be away and all that kind of stuff. But this is the last intro. So this got to jump off the way I, I see it in my mind, you know. Right. So I stayed online with y'all as much as possible. I ordered in the uh, the robes that the that the choir was wearing. I went up to the church and had a meeting with, with the with the uh with the with the um secretary of the church. She said, "Oh yeah, no problem. We're here for you." Sent people down. I didn't have to deal after I lit, put everything on him, on rat on uh Andres over there. I didn't have to deal with nothing, and they handled it all. But it ended up being one of the top twenty twenty one intros uh, for boxing, and I and in large in part because of you. Thank you for that. Oh, uh, thank you. I, I'm gonna say small part, like yeah, the fact that y'all put the whole idea together. Yeah, he was telling me the idea, but I was like, I can't see it. But I'm gonna yeah. just show up. And I got there and I was like, the stained glass, the quiet. I was like, oh, this is crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. So I was just happy to be a part of it. Like, it was it was an easy yes for me. I wanted to ask you about Godzilla. Like that yeah. that word that song resonates with me. Mm. I'm a little dude, you know what mm. I mean? And in in the in 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 the big pond that we swim in, you know what I mean? Right. This big world that we're in, you have to be big. And listening to that song, I'm like. This is everything that I am. And on top of that, she's looping God into the song. I said, this has to be the song. Like, where, where's the inspiration in that song for you? Man, I think me and you relate in a, in a similar way. Like, people here see me and they look at me. It's very, what you do, sing? And yeah. Like, nah, I rap. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm cold. I will get you. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's just tapping into, like, you know, the beauty and the beast part of it. You know, mm. you find a beauty in God, but... Hey, God gave me a power, and I'm going to use that thing, right? That's what I'm you know, saying. Don't, don't get this confused. The, the faith in you, the determination, the will, that's the Godzilla. That's the monster part. That's the big part. So, you know, we just have fun with it, man. It was just in the studio, and 
some sometimes I get in there and I don't have a concept. I just write whatever yeah. flows flows. You yeah. know, I, I let the pen take me, and, and that's that's where it took me. And, and for me, that song also. Last thing I'm gonna say, then I'll let y'all yeah. cut in. But that song, like the way you loop the words throughout the entire song, to me, I don't know all your music, but in my mind, the first word that comes to, to mind is vintage. I'm like, that's classic oh, yeah. uh, rap city right there in that song. And so, like, when I found that one, I said, oh, it's a rap. I was like, this is the one. And and it's literally one of my favorite songs now. Man, that's yeah. a lot. It'd be crazy. Like, that's a lot of people's favorite song. I did that in 2013. It was old. It was I went old. back. Oh, yeah. I told you. I told you. <laughs> like, I went through it all. He was scrolling. It's, and he was like, it's I, so old, like coming up. I don't even listen to it no more because I'm picking it apart. Like, oh, I could have said this. I could have done this yeah. better. But, man, a lot of people relate to that song and so like i'm just i'm thankful it resonates yeah yeah it's, it's one of my favorite joints to perform too though that's what's hey, up you talked about being cold my introduction to you was on one of my my favorites of all time big crit yeah you get to flow about that i was like here. anyone that can can be on the track with big crit and not get <laughs> not get washed out i was like hey, hey that's next level i me and sean got that in common right like you 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 never back down from anyone right mm -hmm. i was the same way i was like i want to rap with the best of the best like i want to earn mine and i have rap with the best of the best big crit kendrick uh jizza j cole mm -hmm. like you name it i've rapped with all of them and either i, I out rapped them <laughs> or, or we we stood eye to eye yeah, you know yeah. we dap each other at the end like good good showdown bro <laughs> yeah. so you know that's that's dope like that's that's what i want that's how you raise your bar that's yeah. how you become the greatest no, I just uh, but one question I had was a little too deep. It was kind of negative too about the music industry and stuff. But I don't. <laughs> That's a different podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got five minutes yeah, yeah, yeah. if you want. If you want, no, 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 yeah. I'll just keep it simple. Then, yeah, is I was. You, I know you know reading about it a little bit. You love you loved MC Light and oh, yeah. Lauren Hill and it's it's some especially rappers from the East Coast and, and I know you North Carolina. But mm -hmm. when I saw. I got to see Peppa, Salt and Peppa perform a couple years back. Mm -hmm. And they were going through their their hits. And that was great. But then there was one song when Peppa, she spit. Like she just went old school and, and it was it was just bars. It wasn't like the you know, it wasn't uh it wasn't pushing. It wasn't for it wasn't for yeah. entertainment. And Fuzzy when she stuff. did, I learned what the word ultra magnetic was. I felt mm -hmm. it. It was like she grabbed the mic with power and you could feel it in her hand movements and and I imagine you got plenty of that in you and you, you know, like you carry like Sean carries it on for the Marvin Hagler. He takes that torch to, to keep that alive yeah. is, is with you. And yeah, how would you break down that power you get on the mic being ultra magnetic? You know what I mean? I think first you got to have a passion and purpose in it. Right. Like if it don't if it don't come through you, then it's, it's not going to come through you at all. So for one, I, I found a purpose and passion through the music. Right. It tells a story like. It's something for me that's therapy. It's a way for me to speak for others. It's a way for me to be inspiration for others. Like for me to travel all around the world, like kids in Africa, little girls in Africa, and they look up to me and be like, I want to be like you, right? And to be the difference in what you see in the media all the time, that's ne not necessarily a full representation of what hip hop and what women in hip hop look like. Like that's purpose and passion. So, you know, it means something to me. So when I get on stage and perform, you know, that's the love for it comes to, you know, like the bar is said, this ain't a game for me. You know, I come because I respect the culture and I know how it changed my life. So in order to keep the culture going in the way that we have to, the bar has to stay up here. And when you lower the bar, you lower the culture and what it means. So it's already being watered down when you think about mainstream media, which is what I was going to. Yeah. So. It's taking, you know, some artists like myself that are legacy artists that want to get back to it. We got to keep the bar up here. Yeah, have fun with it, but we can't let people forget the difference in entertainment and the essence of what the culture is. So that's the balance. Mm. It's all about balance for me. Because I've taken so much from it. It, 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 it yeah. gives me energy, mm. you know, MCs like yourself, it keep, you know, so absolutely. And, and, and both of us being from the South, we kind of understand this. Uh, yeah. We're both from a small... He ain't from the... <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> where, where are you from? Shout out, shout out to see. Where, where, shout out to where you from? Hey, Bunky, Louisiana. Small town. You, don't worry about it. Where, you, where your town from? Oh, I'm from Snow Hill, North Carolina. Yeah, exactly. That's stick. So, no, yeah, just, uh, yeah. you know, basically coming from a small town. You know, at the end of the day, I had a grandmother that always told me, dream bigger. Yeah. Don't let your mom and your dad limit you Absolutely. because they didn't do it. 
So they'll say you couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Remember what we went through through the middle of passage to get here. What what would you say to like a, a, a young black girl in a small town that no one's giving her inspiration? Like she sees you and to her it's like, okay, it's possible. Right. It's possible. Man, you got to believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to. Um, anybody that ever wanted to do anything, they had to envision it first. You got to have vision and then just go for it, right? Like I was talking to Alicia Keys and she told me, she was like, close your eyes. I close my eyes. She's like, open it. She's like, what do you see? You know, she said infinite, infinite possibilities. So it just takes you in, in taking that one step and believing yourself and going and going for it. It's the person that the person that succeeds is always the person that didn't give up. Mm. Always. It's not supposed to be easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. You know, so it's it's having vision to think outside of your circumference and not being in a fishbowl. Once you understand the place I live is not a fishbowl, I'm I'm not chained anything. You know, you just go with the flow. Ta- and create top five most want. subtle Alicia Keys name drop in history, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to Alicia Keys. Yo, I always tell people back from my hometown state, I said, your, the, the, your biggest problem is you won't leave this town. Yeah, you Leave this town. Leave this state. And then the world is yours. Yeah, that always blows my mind. Like, I was on tour uh, with, a, with a guy from New Orleans, and we had a stop in his town. And he was um, telling me right over the bridge is where he was from. He was like, you'd be amazed that people... Uh, I live when I grew up, we have never been over the bridge mm-hmm. into New Orleans. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, they've never been over the bridge. They had no reason to go to. Go to New York, there's some people that have never left yep. the boroughs. Yeah. Yep. They'd be like, I ain't been, why do I need to go to Brooklyn? Why do I need to go to the Bronx? Like, that is amazing to me. Mm. Like, I got a cousin. I got a whole group of family members who never left Brooklyn. Like they, they <laughs> yeah. won't get on a plane, won't go to Fl- <laughs> no. go to Florida. Everybody from New York goes, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't need hey. to ask them where Brooklyn's at. They're there. <laughs> <laughs> where Brooklyn? At? I, I went back to Louisiana. Like, yeah. <laughs> right about here. I, I went back to Louisiana. Took my whole family to fuck with a child. They didn't even know nothing like that existed. Yeah, blew their mind. <laughs> right. It's like all you can eat. I'm like, yeah. Not. It's like high school. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So you you find out that's the biggest thing, like exposure, mm-hmm. and it's got to start at a young age. We gotta you gotta yep. expose people to things so they know it's real and attainable. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Andres, um, cl- if it's not clear, I had you also or want ex- ask you to come on to the podcast as well because you kind of the way you say I'm the glue of the bi- or was the glue of the the, the welterweight division. You were the glue that put all this together. First time you put me with Big E, then you put me with Rap. Well, like how did why did raps come to mind? So, all right. So I'm gonna take it back a little bit because uh, I ain't like, tell the story right. <laughs> no, no, no I, I want to take it back because I think this is important because I came from the music industry. I started yeah. off there, but going all the way back, I grew up on three things: hip hop, pro wrestling, and boxing. Mm. Right? Those are three things that I grew up on. And when I did music, I was when I started off in music, I always wanted to shine the spotlight and tell the stories of the people who weren't getting the light that were dope, but they, they were cut from a different cloth. So Rhapsody is one of those people, back then when I first heard it with Cooley High, it threw two dope boys in shape. When I heard her, I was like, yo, there's nobody that rhymes like mm. this that's a woman, right? Mm-hmm. But let's take it a step further. There's nobody that rhymes like this, period, mm-hmm. right? So I always wanted to document that. With boxing, I always felt like it's a, it's a sport that's dominated by minorities, but it's not being promoted to minorities, right? And I thought there's, there's no... There's no way, there's no connective tissue. Mm-hmm. Even when you watch commentary, like I love Brian Kidney, I love Sergio Moore, I love those guys, but there's not a lot of people like us that translate that language yeah. to the people. Yeah. Pro wrestling is everything. Mm-hmm. Promotion, everything is pro wrestling, right? So it's like when you had a black pro wrestler like Big E, who has a very magnetic personality, he's not just some big guy that's throwing people around. Mm-hmm. And I always felt like everything is pro wrestling, the presentation of boxing, the walkout is such a significant thing. Mm -hmm. It's something that people remember, if it's done right. Right. I don't do anything that doesn't have meaning. I don't just trot out a a, a rapper with a fighter. I don't do any, I don't write about things that I don't like. Everything's gotta be significant because how I grew up, everything has impacted me in some way, shape or form and shaped my life. Mm -hmm. So when this opportunity came up for this, the E thing, it just made sense. It was nothing that was said that was like, I don't even make any sense. It works. Mm-hmm. Knowing who you are, know who he is. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, with rap, because the first person we mentioned was Royce. Mm-hmm. And it just wasn't going to work out. We, I think we talked about Wale for a hot second, too. And I was awesome. thinking, I was like, yo, rap would work. And I was trying to think of the song that would work before you figured it out. 
And I hadn't even got to Gaza. I was thinking power. I was thinking of a few mm -hmm. songs, right? And I was trying to figure it out. But when it all came together, it was one of those things where I said, let's take this step further. How many women are walking male fighters to the ring in a championship fight? Mm -hmm. I don't want to do just a regular walkout. No disrespect to any fighter, but when you're just walking out and they got a rapper with you that's just rapping and they, they can't even hear themselves, this is key. Rappers that walk out with fighters, the lyrics are muffled. You can't hear anything. They off the beat. You was on the money the whole walkout. Yeah, I don't play. And she and she, when tripped me out was she you like you redubbed the, the track, right? Yeah, but they, they didn't play that one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh they, played, they played the wrong one. Yeah, we, we asked on that rehearsal. I was like, they actually played the wrong one. I was like, nah, it's the other one. They got it right. But when we walked out, they oh, took man. it back nah, to the old And she still did it. <laughs> yeah. so, and so, what a pro. Yeah. <laughs> just a pro. But, but my thing was, like, when I wanted to do this, it meant the world to me because I was like, first of all, you not telling me this was your last fight. I should have read the tea leaves. Everything that you said was kind of hinting towards it. Yeah. But I wasn't getting it, right? Yeah. Like, I was so focused on making this look incredible. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I, me and E talked every day. We, we were texting. I was like, let's make sure this works. I want to make this mean something. Yeah. I want this to be significant, just yeah. in general. Yeah. More importantly, there's not, there, I don't, I've never met anybody in boxing like you. Yeah. I've covered this sport for a long time. Yeah. I don't make a lot of friends because it's not important to me to rock with people who don't think like me or not. If I wouldn't rock with you outside of this sport, mm -hmm. I can't rock with you. You're somebody I felt like I could always rock with outside of this sport. If we right. met on the corner, we could be friends. Right. With rap, yeah, I love your music, but I love a lot of people's music. Right. But her soul is just different. Different. He's the same way. When we met, it was just like we Done. talked every day. And obviously, you know, we're working on Our Heroes Rock as well, which is like the schoolhouse rock, black history cartoon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's like things that we wanted to create. So when this all came together, I wanted to make sure that when it happened, people would talk about it. Yeah. Not just in a way like, that's dope. Yeah. But it was like, it looked amazing. It looked like a pro wrestling entrance. Yeah. It, everything was, everything worked and came together. Then we do it, and we got the choir with the light, and you know, my messages are blowing up that people that knew that I put it together, helped put it together, they was like, yo, that's amazing. But here's the thing, when it was done, you know, you exhale, right? Because you're in the moment, you stress out. Yeah. I was like, dang, I hope we don't blow this. Dang, I hope I can get rap out here. Dang, I hope we can get E out here to do this. Hey, I just hope I hope you like it. I didn't want you to walk out of something that you didn't like. Right. When it was over, and then you retired, and I sat there and I was like, I can't believe this man just trusted me with his last walkout. Yeah. And I got emotional for a minute. Yeah. Because if I told 16-year-old me, hey, Andreas, mm. one day mm. <laughs> yeah. you're gonna get a pro wrestler who's also your friend that's the WWE champion of the world, and you're gonna get one of your favorite rappers in the world who's also your friend. And put it with one of the best fighters in the world that's also your friend, mm -hmm. and you're gonna create this walkout for his final introduction to the world. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Why and, he, he did this on, this is supposed to be Motivational Monday, he's supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> but, but when rap talks about, I, I'm from, like, I was born in New York, but I live here, yeah. right? I never had anybody teach me how to get in the music game. Yeah. I just did it because I love documenting the culture. Yeah. I didn't know anybody, right? And I've always wanted to open the doors for other people to know that, yeah, you can do this too. Like, somebody like Rhapsody, who a lot of people would say, she's never going to make it. She's too dope. People say this. Yeah. She's too lyrical. She'll never make it. Yeah. Nominee for a Grammy. Tell yeah. me otherwise. Yeah. Mm. Somebody like Sean, there was like, oh, man, back when there was people like, oh, man, he's just like a football player that could fight. But you got skill. And you're a two-time champion. And then they were like, oh, he's too nice to fight. If you meet him, they're like, that's not a fighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. He got a switch. He can flip it. Yeah. When you see Big E, and you're like, he's just a pro wrestler. He's a big meathead. But you see how charismatic and articulate he is. Yeah. People can do other things and bleed into this. And at the end of the day, when you put it all together, it's something that's beautiful. For sure. And for that to be your last walk out, for you to trust me with that. Yeah. I said it after the fight. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate you so much. Yeah. Because that's that's a lot of trust. You yeah. didn't have to do that. Yeah. Man, that's that's where I come from. I mean, it's this is the port away. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the port away. Everybody that's in here right now, and even the, the producers in there, y'all all we all have this understanding. We all have this genuine love about whatever it is that's going on right now. It's the podcast. Outside of the podcast, it's me wanting to make you smile. You wanting to, you know, hang out and the list goes on. We we still have yet we gotta get up and get up and get up some more Ooh, and make some other things happen. You know what I mean? But collectively that's why I named this show the Port Away because everything that y'all talking about, everything that we talk about it when you speak about the port away, eventually 
it'll all encompass that and everybody will know what you're talking about when you're talking about the port away you know what right. i mean so thank y'all for coming on to the show thank you for having sharing me sharing in this story with me and and us and uh we 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 gonna have you back but we i think we got to do like some motivational monday type stuff because oh yeah, yeah. i think it's something that's got that has to happen man i, 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 I mean yeah. you know it, it's the thing is like this this energy right like yeah. i'm a big believer in energy because mm. likewise I, there's a lot of people i just don't like yeah I, my circle is small like yeah. I, I just don't like a lot of people people see all the things i do it's like you got a lot of friends my circle is tight you notice he looked at his i tell after he said there's certain people he doesn't like, <laughs> nah, like he was like i really don't like people <laughs> but i don't i don't like people who can't match energy yeah. or can't match love yeah right yeah. or can't match belief yeah or you got to be dope that's that's one of my things like i don't rock with people who aren't dope <laughs> in, in my scope like I've met a lot of people who rap, and I'm like, mm, that's not something I like. I'm always impressed by people who do things that I can't do. Yeah. You fight, I can't do that. Yeah. You rhyme the way that you do. Even the, even the all the articles I wrote in the world, there's some things that you've done, and I was just like, man, I couldn't even conceptualize that. Yeah. E, I'm like, look at this big dude like taking bumps, but then it's just like got the charisma. Mm -hmm. it's, it's energy. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, especially when it comes to you, is you didn't need boxing. Yeah. Like you left this sport. And there's a lot of people that leave the sport and they can't retire because they go, oh, this is all I got. Yeah. The moment you retire, this is like, Sean gonna come back and I was like, I ain't never seen a man more at peace. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that, like, you retired and it was not like stress or yeah. I'll be back or the game's gonna call me. Like, the way you were answering questions at the press conference, yeah. I was watching <laughs> and I was like, people were like, he's coming back. I was like, he ain't, no, he's yeah. done. It's crazy. The last thing I say and then we'll be, we'll be done, but I, the, the first time I, I've said this before, the first time I thought that I would retire was after I fought Earl Spence Jr. Mm -hmm. And I literally, like, I didn't do it that night, of course. And then I was in my room trying to feel like, how do I tell my dad that I don't, I'm done boxing, that I don't want to fight anymore? And I was like, Is he the hardest person to tell? Yeah, uh, at that point in time, he was. Because it was like, yo, once you tell your dad, then okay. nobody else matters. You know what I mean? I said, Never will. I'll just, instead of telling him, I'll just keep fighting. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit of that. That that honestly was a little bit of that. And I was like, well, yeah. if I keep fighting, what's my mark? Yeah. Because if I, I can't like just, just do it going, and I don't want to do it anymore, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And I was like, it's gotta be Terrence Crawford. Yeah. In the room. Mm. My dad was like, Do you wanna go to the press conference? I was like, Yeah, let's go. He's like, Are You gonna put your suit on? I was like, No, let's go. And I, like I knew what it was. Yeah. And I was I was so cool with it. No butterflies, you know what I mean? Didn't talk to my dad about it, right? So remember the first time I was like nervous, like how do I tell my dad? Second time I was like, yeah, uh, I'm done. Me afterwards, I'll just say it now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and not that I didn't care what he thought, but it just like for me being at peace with the moment, even though it didn't go the way that I wanted to. Essentially, I think it did because I got what I wanted to get. I got to get in the ring with that man and challenge him. And where no, where everybody told me I couldn't get in the ring with him, I'm 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 all about beating the odds, you know what I mean? And so that's that's what I tried to do, and you know what I mean? I, I appreciate y'all. We don't have the button, so I appreciate <laughs> I you. you. Yeah. So and I appreciate y'all for sharing in that too. Thank, Thank you. We appreciate you. you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, yo, this is the port away, or yeah, this is the port away. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But we're at we're, at we're at Blue Wire Studios. Yeah, it says yeah, it shout up out there. to Blue Wire. <laughs> And um, hopefully we'll be up here some more. Uh, check it out. Um, merch. Like, friend. Theporterway.com. Yeah, Porterway for merch. Yep. All that good stuff. Yeah. God bless you guys. Yeah, yep. man. Appreciate Peace. it. Wherever I'm at. <laughs> hey, congrats, right. KJ, on the uh, engagement. All right, Jones. KJ. Just got to gauge. Oh, I know him. Blue White owner. Oh, oh, congratulations. <laughs> hey, you the man. Enjoy your, enjoy your <laughs> engagement. <laughs> <It's a marriage. laughs> What's up? I'm Showtime Sean Porter. I'm Ant. Follow me on IG. Ant with two T's. This is the Porter Way Podcast. This is Anthony Bernal. And this is Carson A. Merck. Tell them what to do. Hey, like, subscribe, comment, follow, follow us on all social media platforms. <laughs> you subscribe. I'm from Louisiana. I'll talk with a B. Let's do all it. Right, Let's do it again. Let's all do right. it. Just introduce yourself. Okay. And then tell them, and then you tell them what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. You're already, you're already here. Hey, <laughs> hey, this is our outro. We're going to do it how we want to. I'm Showtime Sean Porter. I'm Anthony Breno. Carson A. Merck. Like, subscribe, comment. This is the Porter Way.